You're watching the NCAA pool feed from University of Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. You're watching the NCAA pool feed from University of Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. As we're getting ready to go, I, I just want to remind folks um, to, to silent your cell phones as uh, we uh, talk to our student athletes, and then we'll be talking with the head coach of the uh, Wagner Seahawks. Uh, also, if you, you're looking to ask a question, uh, just just raise your hand. I'll be able to see you, and then um, I'll direct. Uh, we have two individuals that have microphones, and we'll find a, a microphone for you. And before you ask your question, we, we ask that you just provide your name and then your media affiliation. And then uh, this is also um, available online. And we ask those that are, are joining us via Zoom that you just use the hand feature and uh, we'll be able to control that. And we'll um, direct the question of, of who you are listed on Zoom and then you can follow uh, with your question and then finally uh, in regards to the the press conferences here this afternoon and this evening uh, recording 
um, with your cell phone, your camera, it's prohibited. Um, but we will have uh, the uh, the entire press conference available uh, online, and uh, I'll be sharing that information as uh, as we close. And at this time, really excited to talk with the Wagner Seahawks, champions out of the Northeast Conference. Uh, they won the NEC in uh, impressive fashion, uh, beating Sacred Heart, Central Connecticut State, and then Merrimack uh, in the final. And uh, joining us uh, here uh, in the middle is the uh, NEC uh, tournament MVP, it's Ron Allen. And uh, to his left, is uh, first team all NEC Melvin Council Jr. And then uh, finally, Javier Esquera is uh, on the end. Gentlemen, um, congratulations on, uh, on, on making it here. First time in 21 years for Wagner. And we're, we're so uh, happy that you've been able to come here and play for, for Tuesday night against Howard. Questions for our student athletes? Connor there on the end. Connor Bruce, University of Dayton. Um, just walk us through like the last 24 hours, um, getting to Dayton, hearing your name called, and then just playing in this game tomorrow. Teron, if you want to ask that, qu uh, answer that question first, go for it. Got it. Uh, we're just thankful to be here. It, it's definitely been a lot to process for us. Everything's been exciting. Our coach's message and our message to each other is just take in what, what's going on and enjoy the moment, but also be ready for the moment, continue to prepare like how we've been doing it. So it definitely feels unreal, still try to process us winning the championship. So everything is fun and feels unreal, but exciting and everything we wish for. Melvin, uh, your thoughts? Uh, the thoughts is uh, beyond blessed and stuff like that. Uh, we're excited to be here, but like Teron said, uh, coach is telling us to take it in the moment, but we still got a job to do. And then uh, Javier. The last 24 hours have been amazing. This is a dream come true. And like coach said, just have fun here and let's compete. Other questions for our student athletes? Teron, I'll ask uh, just what you were able to do in the NEC tournament and, and sort of uh, your production on the on the season, y y you turned it up in those those three games and and, and being able to, to grab the NEC title. What what's sort of changed in, in in what you've been able to accomplish here in the last last week? Uh, nothing's really changed. Just my teammates trusting in me from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. When things don't go well for me, or when things go go well for all of us, we continue to talk to each other and just be with each other. Uh, Melvin and Javi gets on me the most when they feel like I'm not producing or going as hard as I, I can be going or as I should be going. So I definitely am thankful for, for my teammates just trusting in me and just going out there and getting what we want. It's just kind of been like my motivation to just try to turn it up and, and do what we've been doing in practice. Javier, I know this is a team that has had to unfortunately experience quite a few injuries. They only play really seven guys. Uh, is, is that been a good thing, though, for your group in, in regards to, to rhythm and, and, and sort of finding a groove? Yeah, yeah. It's every, everybody step up. And like Coach said, if we got seven players, you just got to be ready and come ready to play. It don't, it don't matter how many players we have. Just compete. Melvin, sort of a follow-up to that. How, how challenging has it been, though, in, in sort of – the numbers game of what you guys have been up against? Uh, it's been very challenging, you know, uh, with seven guys, but coach always on us. Uh, like he doesn't care next guy in line, next guy up. So uh, seven guys is doing good with that. And plus uh, we got a freshman coming off the bench and he's like adjusting with us and stuff like that. Let's uh, jump on Zoom here as uh, we got to a couple of individuals that uh, want to ask questions. We'll start with uh, Chris. Go ahead with your question for student athlete. Hi, I'm Chris Adel from Hermitson Radio in Baltimore. Guys, congratulations on making the tournament. It, how's it like being representing the whole state of New York in this tournament? Teron, if you want to start, go for it. Uh, 
I'm personally from New York myself, so it's definitely an honor to do that. Uh, I know we're definitely proud to, we're on a small island in New York, actually, so it's definitely good to put on for our community, our school, and just the island. And just to be here representing for New York, for our families, and just for our school, it means everything to us. Melvin? Uh, it means a lot. You know, uh, nobody know where w Wagner's at and stuff like that, so for us to put Wagner back on the map is a blessing. And Javier? It's amazing, just a small island, and we're here back after 21 years, so it's, it's amazing. Matt, uh, joining us via Zoom, uh, your your question for the uh, for the Wagner Seahawks. Yeah, uh, this one's more for Melvin. Uh, Matt Majinski with CBB Review, but Melvin uh, also with News Ten in Rochester. You know, we we talked a couple weeks ago um, about about your journey after that game winning shot. Um, I guess that last question was a perfect setup. Um, you mentioned how Wagner, a little bit in the middle of nowhere, no one knows where Wagner is. Well, you could say the same about Rochester. So. What does it mean for you uh, now that, you know, you can represent the 585 out here in the tournament? That, that was a great question right there. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, nobody knows where Rochester at, but everywhere I go, I just try to, like, put 585 on the map, and uh, every shout-out that I get, I'm going to always shout-out Rochester, New York. Javier, as we continue with, with questions here, Talk a little bit about this team and, and it's what you feel it's biggest strength and, and, and best trait. The biggest strength is our defense. That's what we preach every day. That's toughness. And to win games and to win championships it's about defense and that's what our coach tells us. Defense every day and toughness. Melvin You've been really consistent this year in a big part of you being first team all conference. Uh, when it came to, to the tournament, did did you really feel, and I, I think maybe looking at just some of the scores, that it was kind of every anybody's anybody's game and hoping to, to grab that automatic bid? Right. Uh, you know, uh, during the uh, playoffs, you know, I had a rough start, but – you know, that's that's what a uh, game of basketball is. You know, I'm not going to make every shot, but I'm going to get it back on defense and rebound, and that's what Coach preached a lot on us. And uh, I'm thankful for having Teron, Javi, Julian, Tajay, Shaq step up in uh, big moments for me. Teron, is there any inspiration in what, what FDU was able to do last year for, for your group and being in this same building and, and what they were able to accomplish and not just winning – here at UD Arena, but going on and and, and shocking a, a, a number one seed? Well, I, we all know what FDU did. I got some guys over there that we know, a couple guys over there. So definitely was cool what they did. But I feel what, what gives us more inspiration is just what we've done, what we've overcome throughout uh, the whole season, all the adversity that we put in. I continuously say this on every interview or anything with us in general. That, all the adversity that we've been put through throughout the season is preparing us for this big moment now. So that just really gives us the hope for us to, to make a run, just come out here and, and do what we do best. Other questions for our student athletes? We'll go on the back row there. Uh, yeah, Patrick Sebleski, University of Dayton. Um, you were an underdog in your conference tournament. How do you think battling through that adversity has prepared you for the NCAA tournament? Melvin, you want to start? Sorry. Oh, okay, I start off. Uh, underdog, uh, you know, it's Wagner, uh, low Division One program, so it's going to be an underdog uh, regardless. Uh, but you know, where we come from in practice and stuff like that, the way we carry ourselves, we don't look at us as, as underdogs at all. So we're going to always uh, play with toughness and with heart. That's what Coach preaches every day: toughness. Javier, your, your thoughts on sort of that underdog role? Yeah, when we step on that court, uh, there's no underdog. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. We're humans, and we got a battle. And like Coach said, toughness, and toughness wins. Teron, you want to chime in? Yeah, just like what Melvin and Javier said, there's no underdogs. We, we all here doing what we love to do. We all prepare the same way. We all are the same way. When we get out there, it's who wants it more. And we're just here to play basketball and do what we love. 
For those individuals joining us via Zoom, you can ask a question to our student athletes. You just use the hand feature. Uh, folks that are here in the audience, feel free to raise your hand as we do have a few more minutes with the uh, Wagner Seahawks, the champions of the NEC. Uh, Melvin, outside of obviously what took place with the with the championship win and, and, and coming into the NCAA tournament, what, what's been your favorite part about this season, this team? Uh, this season, uh, you know, we got six guys that's injured. My favorite is like playing against the coaches in practice, you know, <laughs> because, you know, they always yelling at me. So when they on the floor, you know, I, I get a piece that I can like, you know, sh shut them up and stuff like that. So. <laughs> That might be my favorite stuff for the season. Teron, uh, your favorite part of the season uh, in, in, in this team outside of the championship? Uh, outside of the championship, I think my favorite part is just our team bonding stuff that we do that, that no one sees outside of basketball, just going to eat as a team. Uh, the ferry takes us right to the city, just going to the city and walking around and being with each other. I feel like that plays a big role in us seven guys or all of us together. So that's definitely a uh, special moments for us that help us connect more on the court. Javier, what have you enjoyed most? Like Tyron said, the activities we do off the court, we always bond in. We go to New York, walk around, go shopping, stuff like that, doing activities, and we get connected more. And that's how we have good chemistry in the court. Follow-up question, Melvin, on the, the coaches and playing against them in practice. Who's, who's got the best game? You don't have to answer that. Uh, who got the best game? Uh, it's the head coach. I give him that. I give him that. I give him that. I give him that. We, we will get a chance to talk with the head coach, Donald Copeland, here in a few. He did play at Seton Hall, so he, he does have some game. Uh, Teron, what, what, what separates this team? Um, what, 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 what makes you guys unique in, in sort of how you guys go about your business? Uh, other than us having seven guys on the floor, <laughs> uh, I feel what makes us unique is that everything that we've been through hasn't stopped us. We haven't slowed down for anything. Our coach's message hasn't changed at all. So just just finding ways to, to get through and overcome the obstacles that we're putting in front of us this season, unfortunately, I feel like that's definitely it's been different for us. And the last thing that's been different is that we got more coaches than players. Like all the guys that are out there, like coaches, players, which is helpful. So that's definitely a special mix is unique. Melvin, uh, talking about sort of your unique situation and circumstances, has there been a, a, a change in in this team's dynamic as as you moved forward through the year and and where something sort of clicked? of sort of this uphill battle that you guys have faced with injuries? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, everybody just want to win. You know, nobody don't care who eats, who scores the most. Everybody just want to win. So that's what makes us unique. Other questions for our student athletes? Questions online? Gentlemen, we, we greatly appreciate your time, and we wish you nothing but the best. Uh, we're looking forward to watching you tomorrow night against Howard. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you for you. having Thank us. You. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good luck.
And this time we're really excited to welcome to the stage uh, head coach of the Wagner Seahawks and the champions again out of the NEC and uh, Donald Copeland. Uh, coach, b before we let folks uh, ask questions, j just sort of what your group's been able to accomplish and, and your thoughts as you prepare um, for the NCAA tournament. Thank you. Uh, you know, just first off, really, really proud of my guys. Um, you know, what they've had to overcome all year um, to get to this point, the way we did it, how we did it. Um, bigger than the seven players, I would just say the culture. You know, they, these guys really did a good job of, uh, of upholding our culture, and that's something we preach and talk about no matter what we have going on, um, not just on the court, uh, in the classroom, uh, in meetings, and in, in, in all facets of, of being a college athlete, honestly. Um, and they did a good job of that. And, you know, I talked about it after we were able to accomplish a big goal, which was win the championship. I, I didn't need to um, win that game to be proud of them, of them, what they were able to accomplish. So um, I couldn't be more happy and proud and happy for a group. Questions for Coach? Connor. Uh, Connor Bruce, University of Dayton. Uh, just kind of talk about hearing your name called and then, like, the kind of preparation that kind of goes to – coming to Dayton in such a short amount of time and then like scouting your opponent for tomorrow. Yeah, well, well, hearing your name called, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, especially for these guys. Um, I was fortunate enough to experience that as a player and, and, and my one year at Seton Hall as a coach. But uh, seeing that for the, the, my team, um, I couldn't have been more happy. That was what I was looking for. That's what I was waiting for. Um, they probably were different than when I played, right? They had their cell phones out and all of that stuff. But um, <laughs> that was great. And then, you know, fast forward into pre preparing. It's difficult, you know, for sure, you know, because you get a quick turnaround. Um, you know, not a lot of time to get on the court and necessarily go over a team like Howard. Um, we watched them and talked about them for the first time today. My group is usually good in preparing for games, but at the same time, you know, there's no excuses for it. You know, you got to handle it because they're Howard's dealing with the same thing. So, um, you know, we're we're, we're going to make the be the best of it and uh, and hopefully be able to compete. Other questions for Coach. Let's go to uh, Zoom. And uh, Matt, your question. Go ahead. I have two, if that's all right, um, Matt, with uh, with CBB Review. Um, I guess my first one is, you know, is there something to be said about, you know, you guys haven't played in about a week. Uh, it'll be exactly a week when you, when you do play against Howard. Is there something to be said about having some time off to kind of reset for something like this, uh, like this event? Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, you know, we've had periods of, uh, during our season where there was time off. We've had periods where there wasn't. So, um, you know, I did use, try to use the time the best I could to kind of get us uh, fresher. You know, I, the seven guys um, that are playing do have some injuries, just like everybody else in the country. We did revamp some things and go over some things again, So, which I think was beneficial. Um, but at the same time, uh, you, who knows, you could benefit from playing a game. But um, you know, you can't worry about that. We just got to be ready to play because it is what it is at this point. Matt, your second question. Yeah, uh, second one a little bit, a little bit off. And I, I know that obviously your mind is 100% on Wagner on this upcoming game. But just as a Seton Hall alum, I was wondering if you had any comment at all on, you know, the Pirates being left out of the tournament uh, this year. I know there was a lot of debate about that. Um, you know, I'm, all, I'm, a, I'm a proud Seton Hall alum. I'm always rooting for them. Um, I got to play, we got to play against them obviously this year. Uh, I thought that was a really good team. I don't know the metrics behind w why they would be in the, in the tournament or not. I, I am surprised, you know, that they finished top four in the Big East, um, you know, because I think if you watch, I mean, I've, we've played against them in Providence and then I watch a ton of Big East games. I think if you watch those games, you see how competitive they are um, and physical, but you know, I, 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 I assume they would be in the tournament. I was shocked that they weren't. Follow up to that, uh, Melvin was up here and talking about some of his favorite things about the season and was playing against some of the coaches. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that, that you were the best player amongst the coaches. <laughs> and, and, and off your days at, at Seton Hall. Just now coaching, explain sort of – how strange it's been and has it been a joy for you 
playing against some of your, some of your players. Well, well I, I want to first give Melvin credit for the, that's a smart thing. He's not known for <laughs> saying. I, I, I got to give him. I got to. That, that's that is the smartest thing he said um, since he's been in the program. So <laughs> make sure he knows I said that because um, no, I, I I I'm I'm still in decent enough shape. Uh, you know, part of that is I work out. The other part is probably because I'm stressed, but. Um, no, you know, I, I think it's 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 a bonus, you know, to still be relatively young and be out be able to get get out there with those guys. I try not to do it too much because I am still competitive. <laughs> um, so, but uh, I, I I do get out there with the guys and I compete with them, and I think that's good for them too because I am I am, I'm very demanding as a coach, you know. But then also they see me play and and we're able to compete together. I think it kind of balances it out, but. Um, you know, I, my, I haven't had a lot of coaches that were able to compete, so uh, I try to do it as much as I can. I thought it was really neat the other day after you guys win the championship, you're talking with your group, and you, you obviously highlight the, the seven players that are out there fighting, but you also made a point to, to reach out to the, the injured and those six and, and what they've meant to your team on the season and I guess if you could just maybe elaborate on you know how big they've been during this journey and, and what sort of makes them unique in, in the unfortunate situation that you're in no I mean they they were huge for, for us all season obviously you know as a player and, and I went through this as well when you get injured you know it's it's it, it's hard it's hard mentally you're down on yourself you know you're questioning yourself you don't know how you should be right some of these guys are new to the program too and they're injured so like oh I'm, I'm injured now does coach really like me now or <laughs> they don't know um but we always made them feel a part of it um you know I actually put more pressure on them to stay involved um I coached them also on our culture and our culture is if you're in the gym you're going to be loud you're going to be talking you're going to be helping out and at, after a while they took on the responsibility as well you know so we wouldn't be where we're at um without those guys I truly truly believe it they they really were coaches mentors um they were able to get and then some of the other guys that were returners they now got to see another side of it you know um because they 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 felt I was hard on them and now they understand why so they they were able to give them another side of it which I thought was really helpful um Ramir Moore Zaire Williams you know, two guys that are, are real big time leaders for my program, um, they really stepped up and were mentors to these guys. And I thought it was really, really helpful. We have another question via Zoom. Chris, Chris go ahead. Hey, Coach. This is Chris Idell from Hermiston Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on winning. Um, what's it like? Uh, you're going to play Howard tomorrow. Is there anybody in the Northeast Conference that reminds you of Howard? And how do you prepare for a team in like in two days? Um, I, I I can't compare them to anybody in our league right now. Um, I think they're they're a really older team, a big team. I, I don't know if we've had anybody with that type of size. Maybe talent wise, I, I think Sacred Heart because um, I, I thought Sacred Heart was really really talented from top to bottom in our league. Um, real difficult team to pre prepare for. I think they're really well coached, um, really disciplined. And they take advantage of other teams that are not disciplined. Um, and then they have depth. I mean, I just finished telling my team about them. They have three guys on their on their team that were recruited at the high major level, you know, um, and, and played at, at the high major level. So that in itself is a challenge. So it's going to be a big test for us. Coach, so Ron Allen goes on to be MVP of the NEC. Uh, talk about his performance in, in, in those three games and – if anything really changed in in the way he went about his business and and working your way to the title, yeah, no, I I, I was not surprised. Um, that's the Teron Teron Allen I recruited. Um, I think he's been too nice <laughs> all season. Um, he's probably the most difficult guy I've ever had to coach to be aggressive because he's such a great kid and he wants to be a team player. And I think that's what that was all about right now in, in conference tournament time. He was super aggressive, um, and that's what he's capable of. Uh, he had the right mindset. He, was, he wasn't going out any other way, and we needed it. He really gave us a boost, and that was the expectation from him. What separates Melvin Council Jr.? Because he, he's been really consistent for you the, the entire season. 
I, I think he's a baller, man. Melvin, Melvin loves to play. He's a natural competitor. Um, you know, we're talking about a guy that didn't have a full summer in my program, and that's, that's usually difficult for a new guy. And then he really got dropped off on Mars in September with me because I was coming after him every, every day. But he allowed me to do it because he loves to play. He loves to compete no matter what. He's always going to be the same person. Um, you know, and, and I, I think that really speaks highly to who he is character-wise. All season, he's been our leading scorer. And then now we get into conference tournament time. He's not scoring the ball he usually does, the, the way he usually does but he's making all types of other plays for us on the defensive end, um, loose balls, rebounding, um, just coming up with winning plays. I think that really speaks to who he is, and I love coaching him. We got a question here in the second row. Hey, Coach, welcome to Dayton. Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. I wonder, with all the kind of talk about all the changes swirling around college athletics, uh, how valuable do you think it is for schools of all sizes to still be in the field of 68? And I mean, do you have any concerns about maybe what the future might look like? Um, I think it's incredibly valuable. I think, you know, schools like this kind of make the tournament, honestly. I mean, I remember playing overseas and always doing a bracket, right? And then after the, the, the first weekend, uh, all the, the schools like myself are, are moving ahead and my bracket is garbage now. So I think that makes the, this whole experience fun. Um, it's why you come to college basketball to play, to be able to play in the tournament or have an opportunity to do it, um, you know, College sports, I think, in a whole is changing, right? Um, and everybody's adjusting. Um, do I worry about it? I can't say that I think that far ahead. Um, but again, you know, you kind of got to, you kind of got to just go with it um, and do the best you can while you can. But um, to say that teams like us, myself, or maybe some of the other programs, don't belong in this in 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 the tournament, I don't I don't think that's the way to go about it. You know, I think we make the tournament just like some of the other programs. Let's go to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Brady Hopkins with the University of Dayton. So as you know, you play, you've made a couple of uh, appearances as a player at Seton Hall during the, uh, for the March Madness. So how do you think it's going to feel coming back to the term as a coach compared to being a player? Um, it's going to be different. Uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 great, it's a great experience. Um, you know, I, I did get to experience it at, at, at Seton Hall as an assistant, but obviously this is much different. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm more excited for my team. Um, and, and that's what I'm trying to soak in right now uh, as we, we're trying to prepare and all, do all the things. It's cool to still be able to run a practice right now, you know, watch film and prepare for somebody else, uh, you know, because, you know, I don't know what else I'll be doing for the next two weeks, right? Like, uh, what, what, do I, what do I come in and do in the office, right? I'm just going to hang out. <laughs> uh, but, um, no, I'm, I'm excited about this opportunity and being able to do this. Coach, you, you have some some history with with Wagner, which is which is exciting. <clears throat> I just wanted to get your thoughts on on what it means and and sort of that history and now taking this program as as head coach to the NCAA tournament. No, it, it's special. It's really special. Um, you know, when I was transitioning from playing pro, you know, I I thought I wanted to coach, and then I got into it here, and I realized uh, what, what was I asking for, but um. Being able to do it at Wagner, Wagner really embraced me. I was fortunate enough to come under Bashir Mason, man, and, and see how he did it. Um, that was special. And then also a place like Wagner, which has real rich tradition in basketball and so supportive. Um, and then also learning about the NEC. You know, I mean, I, I, pl I only played in the Big East, and then I played at really good levels professionally. And then understanding how hard it is at the NEC level and how much respect I have for the coaches and players at the level. Um, you know, so I soak it all in and I couldn't be more proud. I, I view Wagner as my school, just like Seton Hall or, you know, I went to St. Anthony's. Um, so to be able to do this, to finally push through, it's, it's really special for me. And Coach, you mentioned St. Anthony's. Obviously, you, you played under a legendary coach and, and Bob Hurley. You just alluded to the fact of sort of your uncertainty of getting into coaches after you played <laughs> professionally. Do you think back to, to your high school days at, at St. Anthony to where you, you kind of go, wow, or, or was it maybe in the back of your mind then that you thought maybe you might get into coaching? Right. No, uh, definitely. Uh, it, it probably started for me. My father was a college coach at the Division three level, and he coached me up until the time I went to high school. And 
Uh, he's actually still coaching me right now. Um, that's difficult. You wouldn't believe me. <laughs> um, but definitely, it, it's always kind of been in me. Um, you know, with my father, definitely with Coach Hurley because he's so demanding. Um, and I saw it done that way, and I had success that way. You know, um, you know, to, to, to be able to get to this point and now where I'm running my own program, it's definitely uh, I've, taken, I've taken a lot from those days, the way they did it. Um, I did always think I could get into coaching. I wanted to. It was just I did not know what I was getting into when I did, did take it, start coaching, you know, because it's, it's so much that goes into what the 40 minutes that you actually see, um, which I think all of us understand that. To be able to do it, I know how hard it is, so I have a real appreciation for it. On the coaching front, this team so unique in that really you have seven bodies. Uh, talk about the challenges in, in, in coaching this year from just the personnel that, you, that you're working with, let alone winning a championship. Yeah. No, well, I want to get this out there I, you know, to everybody. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> when it comes to seven players. Um, uh, and, and it was hard. It was, you know, because I didn't know. I didn't, you don't know what you're supposed to do. You know, our last live practice, I, I lost a, a guy to injury, you know, and, and then that's when I said I just can't – we can't practice anymore. And it was constant changing and understanding, are you doing this the right way or should we be doing this? Um, you know, because I was really concerned about the live contact, not having live contact in practice, and now these guys got to play in the game. Um, that was difficult. But uh, you know what? I, I put more focus into who we are as a program, doing the right things, uh, making sure the gym sounds a certain way, it looks a certain way. The things we did do in drill, they needed to be excellent and outstanding at it. When they weren't, I held them accountable, and they let me do it. Um, and they had expectations of themselves. So I would say if there was a group to have seven players with, I'm, I'm, I'm probably lucky it's these guys, honestly. What's the best trait of this basketball team? Toughness. They're tough. They're going to compete. We're going to compete. Um, no matter what's going on, we're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. Um, whether we're up, we're down, um, we're going to be who we are no matter what. And I, they don't need me to, to get them to do that. They'll, they'll do that themselves. Coach, do you have a favorite March Madness moment? Whew. Probably me beating us uh, at Seton Hall beating Arizona. <laughs> we, um, I still remember that. I had a part in that game. I hit a big shot. I, I remember – you know, Arizona had about seven NBA players um, in that game. It was it was a special moment for me, for sure. Um, and then now being able to experience that as a coach, I do think about it a lot. We were talking a little bit earlier about the tournament, what it means, and, and you mentioned uh, sort of programs like Wagner being the story, and I don't think that was even more evident than last year in your conference, the NEC and what FDU was able to accomplish. Do you sort of take that and, and look at it in a different light from last year of what happened in this building with the first four? Yeah, definitely. I mean, now experiencing, like, the travel part of it, especially, like, getting here and knowing what you have to go through, I'm actually more impressed by what they were able to accomplish because uh, I know how hard it is. But, um, I, I mean, that's, that's an amazing story. That is great uh, for college basketball. I think it's great for our league. Um, it just speaks volumes of what this time of year means. You know, anybody has a chance. Anything can happen no matter what's going on. And, um, you know, they are inspirational for sure. Now, our path is probably different, but it gives you motivation to want to hopefully achieve something like that. Other questions for Coach? Coach, anything else that you would like to share about the Wagner Seahawks? Um, no, I'm just ready to play this game. <laughs> well, we are, we're very much looking forward to watching you play tomorrow night. Best of luck against Howard. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.
Thank you for joining us. We are going to be continuing our press conference shortly as we'll be talking with the champions of the Mid-Eastern Athletics Conference and the Howard Bison, who for the second straight year are making the NCAA tournament. I do want to remind folks to please silence your cell phones. Also, please provide your name and media affiliation before you ask a question to our student athletes and then what will be followed by coach. And if you are using uh, Zoom, uh, we ask that you just uh, use the hand feature and uh, we'll, we'll see it and we'll allow you to address your question. Also, the recording in the press conference on cell phones and cameras is prohibited. Transcripts of the press conference will be provided as uh, that, uh, that information and that video will be available at NCAA.com. And we'll be starting here shortly. Thank you. At this time, we welcome the Howard Bison, 18 and 16, and champions for the second straight year in the MEAC. In the middle is uh, Seth Towns, was named to the all-tournament team. Uh, to his left, uh, also all-tournament and first-team all-conference, Bryce Harris. And then at the end, the most outstanding player in the MEAC tournament, uh, Jordan Hairston. Uh, gentlemen, congratulations. Uh, on the championship, and um, Jordan, we'll we'll start with you. Just your thoughts on 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 making the tournament and your excitement here and in, in in this twenty four hour whirlwind. Um, I would just say it's just truly a blessing, a blessing to be a part of this experience, a blessing to be a part of March Madness, and you know, just my teammates have been connected, and I've been able to trust them. They've been able to trust me, and we've been able to accomplish a lot of great things. So. It's a blessing to be here and compete with a bunch of great teams. Seth, uh, your thoughts on, on the excitement that is March Madness? Yeah, um, you know, we're, we're, we all feel incredibly blessed uh, just, just to be in this position. Um, you know, this is, this is what, you know, you, you play basketball for, to compete at the highest stage. And so uh, we're all really, really excited and looking forward to doing that. And then Bryce? Uh, yeah, I, I have to piggyback on what Seth and Jordan said. Um, it's huge. I feel like, you know, you go up to, like Seth said, play on the highest stage and compete against the best. Um, be able to do that in the tournament, not only just to do that, but do that night in and night out. You know, have opportunity to keep playing basketball and, you know, also giving your school exposure is, you know, priceless. Let's go to the second row on the end. Your, your question for the student athletes. Uh, Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. Seth, every player who goes to this tournament, it means something to them. But when you have invested as much of your life as you have into this game, can you put into words what it means to have this opportunity at this stage in your life? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was, I didn't know if I would be removed from it completely uh, for a while. And um, just kind of facing that was, was, obviously really challenging, but um, I mean, being back in the mix of things now, it's uh, just just like it was, you know, I'm, I've, I've thrown myself into the fight, as we often say as a team. And so, um, yeah, I mean, having overcoming some of the particular obstacles that I have uh, and, and being here on the stage with this amazing group, um, I mean, you've asked me if I could put it into words. The answer is probably no. It's 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 remarkable and it feels amazing. 
Uh, let's go back to the second row. Um, where you guys were in your league, and then to win the tournament, Seth, to, to go against those odds, I mean, you've beat other odds. What did it take for this team to beat those odds to get here? Yeah, um, that, I mean, that's, that's a great question. I think um, we faced a ton of adversity this season uh, through injury, through um, a lot of guys going through really, really tough individual things. And, um, you know, it, it, you go in with certain expectations and uh, this year was just like really rocky for us. Um, in a lot of ways. And so to come together at the end of the year like we did, um, you know, in, in the last five or so games and then in the tournament, um, I, I think is a testament to the leadership um, of, of the coaching staff and just to the incredible guys who, you know, were never willing to give up. Um, you know, we can, we can go down the line from 1 to 18 uh, in 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 our team, but um, you know there was there was just complete buy-in at the end, and our culture was so enforced on us, and um, I think that that came to light at the end of the season. Just a reminder for those asking questions: just your name and media affiliation before you ask the question. We greatly appreciate that. Let's go to the back. Uh, Justin Harris, University of Dayton. Um, Bryce, you talked about being able to represent. How does it feel to be able to represent Howard and HBCUs in a in a giant tournament like this? Um, I feel like it's huge. Uh, I feel like in regards to not only just Howard University but HBCUs, um, I feel like this type of exposure isn't common. You know, I feel like especially at the athletic programs, I feel like the talent level can really you know go against anybody in the country, honestly, um, you know. Like I know for, for our team, the amount of time we have and the amount of discipline that we have, um, just having this type of coverage is, is beautiful for us, it's beautiful for our university, you know, it's beautiful for all different types of HBCUs, you know, in the country. You know, like you said before, you know, in order to get here, we had to beat a lot of good teams in the, in the, in the tournament. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of those teams, you know, a couple of those teams could, could just as much be here, you know what I'm saying, in terms of, you know, who they are. The basketball team of Morgan State and, um, you know, Norfolk State and also uh, Delaware State, so. Let's jump on Zoom. Uh, Patrick, your question for our student athletes. Hey, guys, Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. Uh, Seth, you, you kind of touched on it. Uh, just now, but I, you know, I wanted to ask all of you guys, um, what is it like playing for Coach Blakeney? Like, what what was it that drew you guys uh, to come to Howard, and then how how has that experience been? Seth, you want to start? Um, yeah, I can start. I uh, I don't know if I've played for a coach as intense as is Coach Blakeney, and um, you know, it's. It's been a remarkable thing to, to be a part of his program. He's, uh, and, and I'm saying this for a fact, he's challenged me on the basketball court in a way that I've never been challenged. And um, the growth that's come, you know, for me individually, uh, just, just from being a part of his program is incredible. Um, and, you know, the, the, the type of camaraderie and the type of buy-in and the type of dedication that he fosters on his team is unlike anything I've ever been a part of. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a blessing to to be a part of a program that's that's so well coached. <clears throat> Jordan, yeah, your your thoughts on playing for coach? Um, playing for coach is nonetheless than amazing. You know the amount of trust he puts into us, the culture he instills into us, the discipline and perseverance. Everything that we've been able to overcome and go through this season has been um, a tale of what he's been able to teach us. He doesn't just teach us things on the court, he teaches things off the court and the growth we're able to make as teammates and the growth we're able to make to help affect the community has been great. So it's just a testimony of who he is as a person and as a man. And then Bryce, you, you, your thoughts on uh, on Coach? Uh, so this is my third year being with Coach Blakeney. Um, you know. He's 
since he's been here, he's 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 established a culture that is enriched on EGBs and doing you know the small things, doing things like you know running the floor in six seconds, defensive rebounding, offensive rebounding. All these things require no talent whatsoever. You know, all it is is just effort. Um, and since I've been here, you just add guys to the program who you know who embodies those principles, who embodies you know, that way of playing and um, just seeing how how far we've come, how far, you know, he's taken this program and, you know, making sure that the culture doesn't only start with him but finishes with his players, finishes with the staff, you know, and how it even seeps into the community with our service events and things of that nature. So, um, you know, it's it's honestly been a blessing watching the process but also being a part of the process as well. Stay on Zoom, uh, Chris. Uh, your your question for our student athletes. Hi guys, this is Chris Seidel from Herbert Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on winning. Uh, what is it like? Uh, what did you guys learn from last year's uh, trip to the uh, NCAA tournament? And the second question is, what is it like being representing the the whole state of Maryland and the Washington D.C. area, being the only team in this area to be in the tournament? Jordan, would you like to start? Um, based based on representing the whole DMV area, I mean, I would just say it's great. It's great to be able to, you know, put the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia on your back and be able to go out there and showcase and compete for what everyone wants, which is a national title. Seth, uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't here uh, last year. Bryce Bryce is the one who was who's the seasoned vet um, in in this context, at least. Clearly, I'm I'm 26 years old. Um, but, um, in terms of representing the DMV, you know, it's a, it, it's been cool. I've, I've been, I've been a lot of places and, uh, it's been cool, uh, just to, to see the kind of basketball culture, um, that is the DMV and, and that is DC. And so just to be able to represent that, uh, here, um, it really means a lot. Like you can, you can see it. Um, at our games, you can see it at Georgetown games. You can see it at um, this. Well, they call it they call it the state championship game. It's you know a little controversial to call the DC championship games. You know, but um, you you see you see the culture, the the deep and and serious basketball culture. Uh, you know, everywhere. So um, just to to bring bits and pieces of that and to represent that here. Uh, it, it, it's really cool. And then uh, Bryce. Um, honestly, like coming back here, uh, really is just you know understanding the magnitude of this type of event. You know, my first year coming here, I was just I was just in awe by you know the, and it didn't affect who we were as a basketball team, but it was just interesting. You know, like you think you understand, you know how how big this world is and. You know, all the cameras and the lights and you know everything like that and you're really just telling yourself like you know yourself and your teammates as well you know let's not get intoxicated with this let's understand what we did to get here um you know coming here kind of understand it now second time around and it's like okay you understand what the you know how many fans are you gonna be in the stands you understand that you know you're gonna have a couple more people than you expected in your corner you know being at howard university um you know understand that you know, in certain certain times and spaces that you're going to have cameras around you and things of that nature. So um, I feel like, honestly, um, it's just making sure we stay solid and stay consistent with who we are as a basketball team. And, you know, like I, like I said before, understanding that culture that Coach Kenny Blakeney, you know, has given us. And, you know, really just be focused on winning basketball games, you know. We win basketball games, everything else will take care of itself. Question in the uh, in the second row. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dane Daily News. Bryce, um, being here three years, Seth comes in, uh, been all over the world, so to speak, all these different places here in Ohio, even and, uh, and and being from Columbus, he's back home. But what's he brought to you guys? What's it been like having an older player like that? Do you guys kid him about being older? What's it been like in seeing him and and thinking about? everything he's been through to get here? Um, honestly, like, is everything, all of it comes with it. I mean, you know, him coming here, 
was huge. And I'll just speak selfishly for me because, you know, a lot of times talking to him, I'll just be asking him questions. Sometimes he knows, and I'm, like, picking his brain. I guess sometimes he doesn't, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but I feel like, you know, a lot of people on our team, you know, I ask him questions, you know, even though he hasn't been on this team, he's seen a lot of basketball. You know, he's been around a, you know, really huge talent. He is a huge talent himself, you know, um, you know, even on the court, trying to see what he sees, you know, trying to see what, you know, when we watch him film together, you know, what, what we should do with this team, what we should do with that team, you know, considering our circumstances. But, you know, there's also some funny parts to it, too. We gig on him a lot, you know, for being older, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, <clears throat> You know, sometimes we'd be on the court and he'll do something that we that, that's that's a you know highlight player something like that. We scream out, yeah, unk, yeah, unk. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, I mean, he's just like he's 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 priceless to our program. Um, you know the type of impact he's had in just this 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 short amount of time. Um, it's honestly, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure playing with him, man. It's been a pleasure. Let's go to the back row. Patrick Sebleski, University of Dayton. Uh, Seth, this is for you. It was just mentioned that obviously you're a native of Ohio. Are you excited to play a tournament game back in your home state? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm in the O, and I'm I'm playing in the tournament. You couldn't have. Uh, I don't think you could have written this any better. You know. So, um, I will have people here tomorrow. They will be rowdy. So prepare for that. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's 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 get this thing done. Jordan, can you talk about uh, sort of your performance here in in the back end of the season and, and what's maybe have, has changed? You, you were outstanding to the point of being the most outstanding player in the MEAC tournament. Uh, seven of the last eight games, you've been in double figures. Uh, t talk about your role. Um. My role for me is basically just to get, you know, the others involved. So I'm going to do what I have to do defensively, whether it's, you know, guard full court or whether it's, you know, be a help side, make all the rotations, talk, keep our team connected. But my main role is to be there defensively and get these others involved. You know, the, the chef can't eat his own food. So, you know, I want to get the others involved. And then if things happen offensively, things happen. Well, it's been a blessing, you know, the last seven and eight games. It's just been trust. My teammates have been able to trust me. My coaches have been able to trust me. And we've just been consistent. And it started with practice. We got another question on Zoom. Uh, Patrick? Hey, guys. I wanted to ask you uh, one more thing real quick. Um, Jelani Williams. Of course, he's a guy that's been there. He's won before. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he physically wasn't able to be with you guys right now. But just kind of talk to me about him. Like, like, what has he meant to you guys as players? And what ha what has he done to help you guys um, on the sidelines? We'll, we'll start with Jordan. Jelani Williams is a great role model. I mean, that's just point blank, period. Throughout this whole tournament, I mean, nobody sees the background scenes, but he's over there, you know, help guiding me and seeing the things that I don't see on the court, whether it's offensively, defensively. He's, you know, helping me lead the team. You know, he helps me out in every situation, every game we've been in thus far. He's helped me see different reads. He's helped me see different options. He's helped me get through these different, um, like, slumps or like areas that we have to overcome and he's helped me you know be able to try to push this team to a championship and just keep collecting wins so he's a major part of this Seth uh, obviously the question on Jelani but I, I think maybe you wanted to touch in on on Jordan too yeah just uh quickly before I, I, I speak very high praise of Jelani um Jordan Harrison has had one of the more remarkable stories of basketball in college that I've ever I've ever witnessed. Um, you know, he he's he's faced a lot of challenges, and um, just where he started in the program, and and how he fought, and and the resilience that he's had, and for him to be able to come out, um, you know, in in the most crucial part of the season, and do the remarkable things that he's done, I I I cannot let that go. Uh, unnoticed like this this is some remarkable things that or this is this is a remarkable thing that we're witnessing so um yeah i mean i just i i 
I think about it a lot. I talk about it a lot with others, but um, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure I said it in this kind of setting. Uh, this this guy is is incredible right here. So um, yeah, it's 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 a testament to him. It's a testament to the culture again that's enforced uh, at the leadership level. Obviously, next man up. Um, but I mean, for him to do what he's done after you know starting the season not knowing when he would get spot minutes is is incredible so huge huge kudos to this guy and then then your high praise with Jelani yeah um Jelani is uh I don't I don't know if I've been around someone who instills a, a winning mindset in all of his teammates like Jelani Williams um he he doesn't take losing culture like that that will never exist around Jelani and so to have that on your team again um it's 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 priceless and then Bryce unfortunately we're running out of time but just quickly your your, your thoughts on Jelani um Jelani, Jelani is the epitome of a leader and a winner like I can't tell you how many times he's changed the course of the season he's changed the course of a basketball game around just by challenging guys in the locker room uh Letting people know, you know, you're not doing your job. You know what I'm saying? And understanding that for him it's unacceptable not to do so. Um, you know, Jelani Williams is a winner, man. Like, there's, there's point blank period. You know, when he was here playing, you know, if, if it was Corin, cool. If it's not, if it's doing the dirty work, we got to get a rebound. He's, he's grabbing a rebound. We got to get a stop. He's getting the stop. Like, Jelani is like, he's the epitome of toughness. You know what I'm saying? Mental, physical, and emotional toughness. So you have a guy like that around that's gonna get to it's gonna get to everybody in the program, not even just the players. So Jordan, Seth, Bryce, th thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank and uh, we're really looking forward to watching you guys tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And now we'd, we'd like to welcome to the stage the head coach at Howard and Kenneth Blankney, who has now guided this program to two consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. Uh, coach, before we open up questions, uh, just your thoughts on, on what your team has been able to accomplish and, and the excitement of being back in the NCAA tournament. Uh, firstly, it's just great to be in Dayton. Like really really cool to be here um Dayton's a basketball city and you know coming into the arena on the bus I got chills and emotion because I've watched this game for numerous years and uh, have seen some great basketball here so um very grateful and thankful to be here and uh excited to play a really good Wagner team tomorrow on our year it's been uh somewhat fascinating and challenging um, we've played this year with uh, probably the most injuries of any team in the country. We lost 82 games this year due to injuries with guys that are in our rotation. So for us to be able to be here and have a chance to play in March, uh, be a part of March Madness is truly a blessing and just very grateful. Questions for Coach? Second row. Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Um, Seth, we talked to Seth about just his journey. Um, I guess, why did you want him to come play for you? And what's he been like to have a guy with that kind of experience and obviously older than all the other guys on your team? Yeah, um, when we started talking, I, I didn't know, and he didn't know at the time if he would be able to play this year, but you know, Seth, with his 
previous experiences, um, I certainly knew more about him being a Harvard guy uh, than probably a lot. I wanted him as a part of our program, regardless if he could play or not. Um, we do so much work in the social justice space um, that he and his profile, his resume, what he's done in his life has um, really fit who we are as a basketball program. So healthy or not, I thought that it was important for him to be at Howard and to be a part of our basketball program. On the floor, it's, it's been a transition for him. Um, our culture is different, and we require our student athletes to get outside of themselves. And uh, Seth is a very quiet person, uh, at least with, you know, in the structure of our, our basketball program initially. And uh, to see him grow into a leadership role, we're not here if he doesn't grow into that leadership role and become a vocal, emotional leader of our basketball team. Question on Zoom. Uh, Scott, uh, go ahead with your question to Coach. Hey, Coach. Uh, this is Scott Abraham, ABC7 in DC. First of all, uh, congratulations on getting back to the big dance. You're a DMV guy through and through, so you know the quality of college basketball in the DMV region. What is it like for you in this program to kind of have the torch right now for this region, for the DMV? You're the only team in the big dance from D.C., from this region. How much pride do you take in that, Coach? Scott, thank you for the question, and uh, great to hear from you. It's incredible. Um, you know, to think about it, where Howard basketball was when I was growing up, Howard Athletics, uh, you know, growing up in Washington, D.C., there were a lot of people that thought that Howard didn't care about athletics. Um, you know, it was a place that there was so much talent right around the DMV, and it didn't seem like the student athletes that were in high school wanted to attend Howard. And it was almost uh, like a place that you went if you didn't have anything else. And I think since you know, Mr. Kerry Davis uh, was hired by Dr. Wayne Frederick, and the two of those guys had a game plan of making basketball, making football, making women's basketball, making volleyball, making softball a priority. Um, it, you know, under their leadership, under Mr. Davis's leadership, our athletic program has really thrived. I don't think we've had as many championships, you know, previously as we've had under Kerry Davis's regime as athletic director. So to say that we're the torchbearer of, you know, basketball in the DMV, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor because I grew up watching Georgetown. I was a Georgetown fan. I was a Maryland fan. Uh, I saw guys that went to GW. I saw George Mason. I, I was huge fans of some guys that played at American University. And to see that today we have become – uh, the team with the most wins over the last three years with back-to-back -back NCAA appearances is, is unbelievable. Let's go to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Brady Hopkins with the University of Dayton. So uh, right before you came in, Seth had a, took a couple seconds to talk about the journey that Jordan has had um, as a basketball player. Um, so what has it been like to have a guy like Jordan on your team, him being a graduate student? Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's been great. And, you know, Taking transfers in a transfer portal has kind of changed, obviously, the landscape of college basketball. And uh, with that, you know, you have guys that have gone to two, three, four different universities. And sometimes it takes a little bit of an adjustment for young men, young women to get, you know, acclimated to their environment. And I think that was just one of the things that Jordan had to get, a, you know, adjusted to. Um, first and foremost, a fabulous dude. Like, you know, a super young man, high character, really intelligent, kills it in the classroom, very well loved in the DMV. And, uh, you know, right now he's playing as good as basketball, I think, as any guard in the country. So um, it was a big, you know, him being injected into the starting lineup as our point guard has really, I think, evolved us and made us a little bit more of a dynamic basketball team because now we have five throwing scoring threats that are out on the court at every position. Patrick on Zoom, your, your question for Coach. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, uh, Patrick Waring from the MBS Sports Hour. Uh, first of all, congratulations um, to you of getting back to the tournament. I mean, it, this now is your second year in a row in the NCAA tournament, back-to-back -to -back NEAT tournament champs. What What do you think has been the key to success for you at Howard? Patrick, hello, and thank you for the question. Good to hear from you. I, I think that the key of our success has been our culture, um, and that has been something that from day one we tried to establish and build. Um, it's kind of interesting because playing at a high school like DeMatha Catholic High School for Coach Morgan Wooten, playing at Duke University for Coach Mike Krzyzewski, the culture was already built and developed. So I didn't understand exactly what was going on. It was just like as a young player, you get in the back of the line and you follow. And we didn't talk about culture because, you know, Coach Wooten had been there for 30 years and Coach Krzyzewski had been there for, you know, maybe 20 years before I got in there. And it was just one of those things that you kind of just followed command. So for me, trying to build and establish culture um, was truly something that was challenging for me. Um, Dr. Joe Carr, one of the leading sports psychologists in the country, is certainly – uh, a really responsible that working with us to help us establish and build our culture. Um, he has been such a um, mentor for me over the last few years, and he's somebody I've known since I was 14 years old, uh, but helping me implement uh, a culture that is um, something that we can translate um, to our student athletes that they get and understand, it's been phenomenal. Let's go to the uh, second row on the end. Coach Marcus, Hart Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. Uh, welcome to Dayton. And just uh, you talked about the, uh, you know, the things that sports have, the way they've developed at, uh, <clears throat> at Howard. I wonder, with all the changes that are happening in college sports, some of the, the various things that have been floating around there about maybe how the tournament could change, you know, how important do you think it is to have schools of of all sizes, and you've got a, obviously a breadth of experience at different kinds of schools, uh, you know, kind of involved in this in the field of 68. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the question. That's the beauty and the magic of March. If you take that away, you're not going to have, you know, 12 5 upsets, 16 1 upsets, UMBC, Virginia, um, George Mason in the Final Four, the two teams in the Final Four last year. Like, that is the beauty and the, the magic of what makes March Madness, March Madness. You know, there's so many brackets that get tossed out the window. <laughs> and that, that may be the issue. <laughs> but it, it's, it, it, what, it's what makes March special. And, you know, I, that's what I talk to our team about. Is like, March is different. There's a magic that goes on if you play with a spirit, if you can stay connected if you can be the, the most enthusiastic, passionate team, anything can happen to your team in that, that period that you're playing in, in March Madness. So I, it would be extremely disappointing if that happens, um, but I do understand the business of sport. Coach, you, you mentioned the madness, and you, you highlighted George Mason. Obviously, you were talking about the 16-1. We had one here last year with FDU going on to Columbus to, to beat Purdue. Is, is there some, is there more excitement of, you know, looking back to, to 2023 as a 16 seed to now being in the first four and being a 16 seed? I, I think that, uh, great question. Yeah, you know, when you think about it, it's, I don't wanna, you, you just wanna be here. And uh, being here means something. And it, it's, uh, I, I get chills in my, you know, in my, my arms, like it's, it's, it's a big deal to, to have a chance to compete at this level. Like tomorrow, the basketball world will be watching this game here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, this gym symbolizes something about March that kicks off the tournament that is so really cool about basketball. And, uh, you know, so I, I just love what – the pairings of a 16-1. Some of those games are out of control with the scores, um, but some of them are great games. 
Um, but when you go through the pairings and you see mid-majors that can advance and, and have a chance to, you know, bust some brackets, that's, that's what this is all about. You have really good basketball teams. You may have better basketball teams, right, that are playing in March um, that are low-major, mid-major teams than Power 5 teams. So to have that opportunity to compete on an even playing field um, with – neutral refs on a neutral court is really cool. Let's go to the back. Hi, Coach. Allison Clark with the University of Dayton. And my question is, before a big game like this, what do you do to get your team prepared? Thanks for the question, Allison. I, there's not much today or yesterday that we could do. Um, we played Saturday uh, afternoon. We after our game, our women's basketball team, Howard women's basketball team, played Norfolk State in the championship of the MEAC tournament. And our players and some of our staff went back over and watched. Um, you know, we got on the bus after that game and drove back to D.C. By the time we get home, it's 11 o'clock, 1130. So, you know, I couldn't sleep. Uh, I was pretty jacked up. So just stayed up and watched everything on, you know, all the different sports networks and looked at, surfed the web a little bit and just kind of, took it in. Um, you wake up the next day and it's like you can't practice because we've just played three games in three days. So the, the best thing we can do at that point in time is just let our bodies rest, try to get some sleep, eat, hydrate. And uh, you know, at 6 o'clock we met for our watch party and found out where we were going. Um, by 7 o'clock, 7.30, I was home at my kitchen table watching tons of Wagner. Uh, until I went to bed and then waking up this morning at 7, trying to pack and uh, meet our team on the bus for 8.30 uh, departure from Howard University. Uh, got a 10.30 flight, got here around, I don't know, 12, 12, 15. Checked in the hotel, got a meal, got a nap, watched some Wagner, and here we go. Patrick, another question for Coach via Zoom. Hey, Coach, you – um. You obviously, I think I talked about, I talked to you about this last year. I mean, you guys have been huge in the community. Scott mentioned it earlier. You know, you're from the area. Uh, I read the Bison Blast. You know, I know you, uh, you talked about growing up in the area. Um, is that a big push for you to do things in the community, especially because you're from the community? Yeah, Patrick, thanks for the question. Um, it, it's a big push for me to do things that I think exposes our guys and educate them in a different way. Um, certainly there's your education that you get on the campus of Howard University, but being in Washington, D.C., and I think being in any city or any place that you're there to get an education, there's, a, there's an opportunity and an obligation as an educator to expose and to put your students in situations where they will grow, develop, and, you know, become better men, uh, better women, and future leaders in the community. So it's all about, you know, giving our students an education that's, that they can't get inside the gates of Howard University. So if we can expose our young men to the White House, we're going to do it. If we can expose our young men to Capitol Hill, we're going to do it. Last year, our social justice project was black maternal health, and in that we spent probably five or six different opportunities with the Vice President of the United States um, doing things with her. Uh, we were on Capitol Hill uh, for things surrounding black maternal health. Um, you know, this year we were with Pete Buttigieg. Um, you know, we, we've done so much within the structure of things that we can do in Washington, D.C., but it only benefits our players and exposes them to things that they cannot get inside the gates of Howard University. Unfortunately, we are out of time, uh, but Coach, thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, we are really excited to watch your team tomorrow night. Thank you so much. Appreciate everybody. Tomorrow night, uh, it'll be the Bison of Howard going up against uh, the Wagner Seahawks at 640. Shortly, we will be talking about our second game for Tuesday night as we chat with the student athletes of Colorado State.
didn't even take it. Unwind it there. Oh. We're waiting for the Colorado State Rams. Just a reminder to those individuals here in the press room, uh, please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question. Those individuals joining us online via Zoom, uh, we ask that you use the hand feature, and uh, we'll see it, and uh, we'll make sure that your question's asked. And then a reminder that recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. I look forward to talking with Colorado State here in just minutes.
Kill yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got, uh, we got all the Colorado teams. At this time, we're really excited to welcome on to the stage the Colorado State Rams. 24 and 10, 10 and 8 out of the Mountain West Conference, and one of six teams uh, from the MWC to be appearing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, in the middle is uh, Isaiah Stevens, first team, all conference. Uh, to his left, Nick Clifford. Third team all conference, and then on the end, uh, Joel Scott. Those that are looking to ask questions uh, here in the room, please raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. Uh, those individuals online, please use the hand feature uh, via Zoom. Uh, Isaiah, I guess we'll start in the middle. Just your feelings on um, uh, making it to the tournament and uh, what you guys have been able to accomplish this year. Uh, definitely excited just to be a part of it. Uh, it's not every year that you get this opportunity. Uh, so the fact that we were able to put together a resume uh, in a season that allows us to be in this position is something that uh, we're not taking for granted. And uh, hopefully we keep this thing going, but it starts right here in Dayton first and foremost. Joel, your excitement. Yeah, um, I'm super excited. Uh, obviously, the first, first year here at uh, CSU, and uh, we've worked super hard to get where we're at. So. Uh, it's an exciting exciting time, and we're just excited to play. And then, Neek, your feelings? Man, just like both of them said, we we excited to be here. We uh, This is a goal we set out at the beginning of the year to accomplish, and so we're here now. Uh, we, we're not finished. we we got a lot more to prove, but uh, definitely just happy to be here. Let's uh, go to the first row. On the end, we'll get you a microphone. Isaiah, you guys as a team, it's team together, but it's also, Nico has a phrase, be a cockroach. Considering your schedule the last 24 hours, how have you guys felt about being a cockroach and how have you handled it? Uh, I feel like we've handled it really well. Uh, be, a cockroach, be a cockroach is just being able to adapt to any situation that's thrown our way, uh, not flinching at the, at the doorsteps of adversity. So uh, I feel like we've done a really good job of just picking up on the schedule, picking up on the game plan, uh, and just putting our best foot forward regardless of the uh, hand we're dealt. And we're, we're going to be ready. I mean, for all of you, what was the weirdest thing that you probably had to do to get ready to get out here between selection show and getting on a plane at 9.30? I think it's all just comes down to making sure you get the laundry done, man. We were just in Vegas uh, for majority of the week. So just making sure that you kind of reset and have everything you need. But uh, me, me and my roommate, we were able to get everything situated. And then, uh, Joel, your thoughts in the last 24 hours? 
Yeah, it's definitely uh, been pretty busy. Um, like Zay said, it was kind of just getting the laundry done was uh, kind of the most important thing uh, to do <laughs> <laughs> last night. So, uh, but other than that, I, I think everyone's kind of, it's more just excitement. We're all ready to go besides, again, the laundry, but we're all just excited to be here. And uh, Nick? Yeah, it was a quick turnaround. We was just in Vegas, like we said. Uh, had a had a good little run out there, and now we now we made this quick trip to to Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it was definitely definitely a long ride here, but definitely glad we're here now, and just excited to get on the floor and all the new guys that haven't experienced this yet. Uh, just excited for them to be able to be a part of this as well. Stay in the first row. Nick and Joel, for you guys, obviously, when you're looking at transferring, I'm assuming, you know, getting to this point is one of the things you're looking for in a roster and a program as that being a possibility. So what's it like now that you are here and you you guys, you know, have reached one of the steps you, you hope to do this year? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty special. I mean, um, for me, when I was transferring, uh, when I first decided to come here, it was pretty evident that we had a pretty talented team. And so this was definitely one of our goals to be where we are here, be where we are. And so it's really exciting to see that kind of uh, kind of come all together. And it's exciting to see what we're going to be able to do with it. Nick, you know, going through that process, uh, you're looking at all different things uh, individually where you can succeed and then somewhere where you're going to be a part of a winning program. Uh, I had a good feeling about coming to CSU, playing with a guy like Isaiah, who has the resume, uh, Coach Medved, They've already been to the NCAA tournament before, so I knew we were capable and I knew we'd have the roster to do so. Uh, you never know when you get there what it's actually going to be like. But uh, right right when I got there, I just knew we, we were going to be able to make a run. And I feel like uh, the season went pretty well for us. You know, we didn't uh, win all the games that we, we expected to win, uh, but definitely had a great season and we're here. So. Uh, Definitely excited to start this. I can't <laughs> said that said that too many times. <laughs> just a reminder for those asking questions, if you could just give your name and then your affiliation, much appreciated. Stay in the first row. Kevin Lytle, Colorado. Uh, the scout on Virginia, kind of what jumps out to you guys as kind of keys that, that you'll need to focus in on tomorrow? Isaiah? A uh, super talented group, a uh, very connected group, uh, one that's disciplined on both ends of the floor. They're going to run their stuff. Uh, all the way through, uh, they're super smart as far as what they're reading, what they're looking for, uh, how they get you in rotation. And on the defensive end, that's really where they make their bread and butter. Uh, they're super sound, tough, physical, uh, and they understand <laughs> what their rotations look like, how to keep you on the perimeter and not get themselves in too many rotation situations. So it's definitely going to be a tall task. Joel, your thoughts on the Cavs? <laughs> yeah, uh, like Isaiah said, they're super solid on both ends of the court, but uh, on the defensive end, it's kind of – is what they do. So uh, just staying mentally tough and knowing that like they're gonna they're gonna be playing us tough down there, and uh, just keep looking for what we want, keep working on what we do is gonna be most important. Not getting frustrated with uh, how they're playing us. And then Nick, uh, y your feelings on Virginia? Uh, very good defensive team, uh, but I feel like for us is just focusing on what we do. Uh, I think sticking to our game plan and running our offense, not letting them uh, get us out of. What, what we do, and then defensively, we just got to guard and play with passion. Uh, I think we're going to be just fine, though, and be ready to go, like they said. Second row on the end. Hey, guys, Matt Digby from ABC 22, Fox 45. Welcome to Dayton. Question for all three of you. The fact that you saw that you're going to be facing Virginia a couple years ago, they were on one side of history, losing the UMBC. Then the next year, they turned it around and end up winning the national championship. So knowing that you're going up against the opponent that has made headlines the last couple of years for various reasons, how much more does that motivate you going into tomorrow? Nick, we'll start with you. Oh, no, it's a great uh, organization that they've put together. They have made a lot of runs through the NCAA tournament and have a great resume. So uh, definitely excited to go against a team that is of that caliber. It has the success history that they do. So um, what, what I said earlier, we just got to focus on us, though, and stick to our game plan, not let them get out of what we do. Isaiah? Um, similar to what Nick said, understanding that they have had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament, uh, 
extremely well coached, a coach that knows what it takes, what it looks like. So he's going to have those guys ready to go. But uh, it's a great opportunity for us to kind of test ourselves and see where we're at as a program. Um, and these are the games that you live for. Uh, at this point, there are no cupcake games. Every team you play has done uh, what you're aspiring to do. And so uh, it's going to be a really fun game. And then Joel. Yeah, um, it's definitely exciting playing a team like Virginia. Um, again, you obviously have seen them on the headlines, multiple different reasons, but it, it's cool to play a team that's uh, had success and that's been there and done that and kind of get up, go up and see what we can do out there. Let's go to the back. Um, Justin Harris, University of Dayton. Uh, you guys are one of six teams in in, um, in the NWC that are playing in this tournament. How are you guys able to like? stick to your plan and not get cluttered in with those other teams and be able to get like show yourself. Joel? Yeah, I think, it, again, everything kind of just comes down to us and what we do. And so uh, focusing on uh, our game plan and just how we go about things, I think, is the most important thing uh, going forward. And so it, it's, a, it's an exciting t time, and it's really cool to be one of those six teams in the Mountain West to make it in the tournament. So we're just going to enjoy it and go from there. Isaiah? Similar to what Joe said, it was a really strong year for the league, uh, high level basketball all throughout the conference. But just understanding that we are who we are, uh, we got to just focus on ourselves at this point, uh, try to go out there and put together a great game plan that's going to allow us to go out there and find success uh, tomorrow night. But uh, it was fun competing in that league, though. It was really competitive. And Nick? You know, it, it, like they said, <clears throat> it speaks to just how good our league was. Uh, but I think that sets us up for success going into this tournament, playing those high-level teams. Uh, so we're gonna be we're gonna be battle tested and battle ready uh, when we get into these high-level, high environment games. Uh, but you know, you want to see the Mount West teams do well do well in this tournament because it helps the league. Uh, but we got to go do what we do. First row on the end. Joel, uh, Mike Prohard from CSURamps.com. You're one of three players. You and Joe and Patrick all started your career at a smaller level, and now you're here at the big dance. Is, does that hold any special value to you? Uh, yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. Um, this is what, what you dream of as a kid. Um, so actually being here and just seeing March Madness everywhere and just kind of seeing the court when we kind of walked by, it's just kind of surreal. Uh, it's kind of taken in, it's kind of been really cool. It's been a really cool experience, but yeah, no, it's it's an awesome experience, and I'm just excited to kind of get going. I'm kind of antsy, you know, ready for tomorrow night to get here. Joel, two times uh, going to the Final Four in, in Division Two, and um, now here with, with March Madness. Um, what, what, what do, you, do you have a favorite moment of the tournament? Oh man, I mean, uh, just uh, I think all of it's pretty <laughs> pretty cool. I don't I don't know if there's. I think being uh, at Division Two and being in the Elite Eight, that first Elite Eight game that I played Division Two was probably one of my favorite moments. Being the beating the one seed in that tournament for me was probably my favorite moment. Isaiah, uh, you were able to experience it in 2022 with with the Rams, but do you have a, a favorite moment with a player or or just a fan growing up? Uh, my favorite player growing up, uh, when it comes to March Madness, was Shabazz Napier. Uh, I was a uh, a big UConn fan, uh, Kimball Walker and Jeremy Lamb and all those guys were just uh, extremely fun to watch, extremely dynamic as a playmaker. So uh, I remember me and my brother and my dad spent a lot of time just following their journeys throughout uh, March, and hopefully we'll be able to create some of that same magic. Nick, obviously interesting in that you know you spent time at, at Colorado, but your your favorite moment? Um, I think. Just getting to experience that my freshman year, uh, I didn't really play a lot, but I got in at the end and scored. It was it was a crazy, crazy moment for me just growing up watching these these tournaments. Uh, I'd say growing up, I think I I watched Buddy Hield when he made his little tournament run and was going off. Uh, he was really fun to watch, and I became a fan of him. So uh, I'd say that was probably my best memory. Let's go to the second row. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Um, Nick, speaking of Colorado, what, um, how, why, how's this year been really good for you to come over to CSU? And uh, are you hoping to maybe run into some old teammates tomorrow? Uh, you know, I, it's been a great move for me. Uh, everyone's taking me in with open arms. It's been a successful year. And, 
it's just been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying everything, just trying to take it all in. But, you know, I'm excited for, for those guys. I'm glad they had the success they had this year and were able to make it into the tournament. I'm sure I'll probably run into them while I'm out here, but I still keep in touch with a lot of those guys and just want to see them do well. Let's go to the, the fourth row. Hey guys, Brady Hopkins with University of Dayton. Uh, Nick and Joel, this is for you. Um, so as both of you know, you guys are both from Colorado. So what has it been like uh, to come to March Madness representing your home state and being able to play in your home state all season? Nick, we'll start with you. Uh, it's been an honor uh, playing at Colorado State. You know, you get a lot of family and friends that come and watch you play and you just get to put on for, for the state that you grew up in. So it, it definitely means a lot in that regard. Um, to be at this stage, you know, you got a lot of people texting you, calling you, telling you just how happy and proud they are to see you be in this moment. Uh, so it's definitely really cool to be able to represent that um, and be a part of something like that. And Joel? Yeah, kind of like what uh, Nick was saying, it, it, it really does mean a lot and it's really special uh, to be able to have family come up to almost every home game and just kind of represent where you're from uh, when you're traveling and wherever you go to is, is it's a really cool experience. And it's just been fun to kind of be back home and uh, represent Colorado, like you said. So it's, it's been special. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on a terrific season. We're really looking forward to watching you tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. And at this time, we, we'd like to introduce the head coach of the Colorado State Rams and Nico Medved. Coach, uh, before we open the floor to questions, uh, y y your thoughts on the season and uh, what your team's been able to accomplish so far? Um, you know, first of all, I mean, you're just – um, there's so much that goes into these seasons, and we're just grateful to, to, to be here. And I think it's the greatest tournament in the world. I think it's uh, one of the most difficult things to, to do in our sport, quite frankly, is earn an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. Maybe this year as hard as ever, uh, um, considering everything. And um, to just think that we have an opportunity to do this is awesome. I mean, our guys earn that with their performance. We put together a really tough non-conference schedule. We went 12-1 and one and performed really, really well. We played in, a, um, in an elite league this year. Uh, um, and competed really, really well, and um, we found a way to find ourselves here. So we're uh, we're excited to be here. And the um, way I look at this is we're a 10 seed in the NCAA tournament, and we just get to play one more game than everybody else. So uh, that's a pretty cool, cool deal. Let's go to the uh, first row on the end. Mike Brohart, CSURams.com. You, you have a phrase where you talk about be a cockroach. Considering your last 24 hours, how has your team handled being cockroaches? <laughs> Probably have to explain that to people, right? Uh, um, we yeah, what is be a cockroach? <laughs> <laughs> people looking at what are you talking about? Um, you know, for us, we, we try to compare, you know, a, a, a panda bear to a cockroach. And again, without getting into the weeds here, a panda, you know, lives in only a certain region of the world, a uh, certain climate. Uh, uh, they only eat one kind of food. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, their environment has to be perfect for them to survive. Um, and then you take a cockroach, on the other hand, you've been around them, uh, those guys can live through anything. I mean, whether it's 50 below zero, uh, 150 degrees. I remember having them in my, when I first was a, a student assistant or whatever, and they're in your apartment, you're trying to, you know, stomp on them with your feet or throw basketballs at them to kill them. They just live through anything. And so, the point being is that cockroaches can adapt to anything in their environment and not only survive, but thrive. And that's what it is. You know, things happen in life, situations happen on a daily basis, and you've got to be a cockroach. You've got to find a way to, to not only survive, but learn to thrive in those situations and uh, make the most of what's next. And it's just another situation to do that. For you in the last 24 hours, what's been your greatest cockroach moment for you personally? Well, I mean, you know, listen, I mean, everybody, it's part of the beauty of Selection Sunday is, you know, People, ah, you have no idea where you're going. You don't know what your seed's going to be. It's it, There's excitement, right? And 
And uh, we were throwing a curveball, you know, um, having to play tonight. Um, everybody knows we got home at 1.30 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, we hadn't even really, you know, unpacked our bags. We got some sleep, and we go to the selection show. And next thing you know, you know, we're in Dayton. And obviously, we were on Pacific time now or East Coast. And um, so we're, we're figuring out how we're going to watch UVA film, trying to get our players some rest. And uh, then, you know, they, they tell you, hey, you know, your flight's going to leave at, at 9.30. And, you know, got the guys up in the morning, brought them over, just watched a little bit of film. And then, you know, flight took a little longer than, than we want. And we I think we landed in Dayton. It was around 3, a little after 3, 3.30. And 25 minutes to the hotel, whatever it was, got in the bus, uh, uh, ate a taco, um, taped on the bus, got over there and got about, you know, 45 minutes of practicing down the road. And now we're, uh, and now we're here. So it's just, it's a different kind of, of preparation. But at this time of the year, you got to do the things that, you've practiced all year and that have allowed you to be successful. And man, we're looking forward to tomorrow night. Stay in the first row. Kevin Lytle, Colorado. Uh, do you kind of harken back almost to MTE type of, you know, experience for, for this type of, you know, kind of whirlwind weekend? Or week? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're playing a new opponent from a new league. Um, I know the uh, the Bennett family fairly well. Uh, I think Tony, if if he isn't, is clearly one of the best coaches in the country for what he's done in their program. And so you're preparing for an elite opponent in an elite program. Um, but it is. It's different because, you're, man, you've just been in the grind in your league. Everybody knows everything about each other. And uh, you get an opportunity to play somebody different. And I think that, that's kind of neat. You know, like you say, Virginia, you know, people know that program and what they do very well. But how much is it kind of key for you guys to, you know, lean into what you do too, you know, as opposed to, you know, react to what they're doing? Yeah, and, and especially, you know, the one thing I know about Tony and Virginia and those teams, let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to lean into what they do. <laughs> That's what they've done and he's done his entire career and, and that's what makes them so some, uh, 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 successful is they're, they're great at what they do. So they're not going to try to do anything different um, against us. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, you obviously have to, to look at your opponent and some things that, that they do really well that, that you can help try to mitigate. But at the end of the day, yes, it's lean into what you do, the things that have allowed you to be successful when you're playing your best basketball. I think trying to do anything different than that uh, is going to set yourself up to not have success. Sort of a follow-up que question. With the Rams, where are they at their best? Um, you know, if you followed us, I mean, we're a team that – when we're at our best, we don't turn the ball over. Uh, we share it at a high level. Uh, uh, we get back on defense. Um, we force teams to play late in the shot clock, which I don't think will be an issue tomorrow night. Uh, um, I say that tongue in cheek, but but so uh, um, we do do that that fairly well. I think we're tough minded. Uh, I think we're together, uh, um, and we've got an elite point guard um, and some other terrific players too. And. Um, you know, we move it, we share it, and, and we knock down shots. And so, um, sounds pretty simple, but that's been our uh, that's been our formula. Let's go to the second row on the end. Hey, Coach Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. Uh, welcome to Dayton. However much sleep you've had, uh, you talk about this being the greatest tourney in the world and the difficulty of getting in a large bid. So I wonder, kind of, where do you come down on the potential for the tournament to change in the future? I know there's a lot of different things floating around there. Who knows what might happen? But just what's your general viewpoint on that? Well, I think. I, I think that, you know, I've said for years, you know, there's been a lot of pushback on, oh, we can't expand the tournament. And while I understand that, I said to people for years, I said, well, they're going to expand it. It's just a matter of time. And I think we're probably closer to that than people realize. And, you know, maybe I'll get pushed back on this, but I, th I think you just, you know, in my opinion, it's my opinion, I think there's very little difference between somebody who's a seven seed and the um, sixth team out, you know, of the tournament, maybe especially this year more than ever. Um, and there's more parity in our sport. Um, and just, you know, with conference realignment and some of those other things, I think that's inevitable and um, they're going to do it. I hope they find a strategic way to do it. And I think there's still a way to do it where you don't lose, you know, what we have uh, um, right now. And obviously change is scary uh, for some people, but I mean, 
we've lived through more change here in the last couple of years and in, in, in college sports and our sports than ever before. Um, but I think there's going to be more. And um, I think it's a matter of time, maybe sooner than later, before the NCAA tournament expands. And uh, um, I think we can do it in a way that makes sense for everybody. Second row on the end. How's it going, Coach? Matt Digby from ABC 22, Fox 45. Welcome again to Dayton. Two years ago, you were in the tournament, and there are a fair amount of players. I know a lot of roster changes, especially in this day and age, you know, bringing in new transfers, but you do have a lot of players that were on the team last year that are back this year. Does that help you, knowing that you were just in this stage two years ago as opposed to had the gap been longer? I, I mean, I hope so. There's obviously some guys who've been here in this moment before and know what that's like. Um, I think it – I. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, obviously, uh, Isaiah, um, um, who's an elite player, he, he's been on this stage before. He understands what that's like. I think this is a team that's played in big games. Um, one thing I know, you know, I, I, I'm familiar with Dayton. When I was the head coach at Furman, I, I, I took my team here to play. I followed on TV. Awesome place. I mean, I, they, they are going to. The energy, the people love basketball here. Uh, they support this tournament at a high level. Um, and so, to be honest, the fan support here, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, it's going to be better than a lot of the first sites any, you know, anywhere because people care about it so much, and so it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Let's go to the fourth row. Uh, Patrick Sebleski, University of Dayton. Uh, you guys are one of six teams from your conference in the Much Madness. What kind of advantage does that lend you having to sort of run through the gauntlet in conference play coming into the tournament? Um, I... <laughs> You know, I again, I think there's probably, you know, a lot of people who maybe don't stay up to watch Mountain West after dark, <laughs> as, they, as they call it. But <laughs> the league's been awesome. I mean, I, I've been uh, um, in it for a long time as an assistant and a head coach, and I've been other places around the country. Uh, the level of competition from top to bottom was unlike anything I've ever seen this year. I think that clearly, you know, prepares us for this. And I think we had a really difficult non-conference schedule too, you know. Uh, we played Creighton, uh, who we were fortunate enough to beat. We played Colorado, who's in the tournament in the non-league. We played St. Mary's, uh, um, who's in the tournament. Uh, we beat Washington on a neutral, Boston College on a neutral. Uh, um, you know, we, we, we challenged ourselves, you know. And so I think all those experiences prepare you for this, and I'm sure Virginia would say the same thing. But I think both teams feel battle-tested, and they know tomorrow will be a battle. Coach, talking about uh, how difficult your league is in the Mountain West, uh, Isaiah Stevens now two times, first team all conference and led the conference in assists. Obviously, also very capable of scoring the basketball over 16 points per game. Talk about him as a, as a player and what, what he's meant to your program. I, I mean, I, I can't, you know, people who follow so I, I can't really even put it into words. Isaiah Stevens is a, is a unicorn. Um, he's been our starting point guard for five years. Uh, um, that was clear uh, about a month into camp uh, when he was on campus his freshman year. I'll never forget when I told him um, before we started in the fall. I had took him to lunch and I said, Isaiah, you're going to be my the starting point guard here, and I intend for it to be that way the rest of your career. And by that time, he didn't know it was going to be five years of, of what it of what it was. But he's the all-time leading scorer, all-time leader in assists, all-time winningest player. Um, all-time human being, all-time leader. I mean, there's just there, – you can't even put enough adjectives around that of what he means to me and means to our program. He's been a Hall of Fame player uh, uh, on there and has just exemplified what it means uh, to be in our program at the highest level. And he's one of the rare guys that stayed. You know, he could have had any opportunity he wanted uh, um, in, in here and decided to do it um, with us at CSU. And, and uh, um, he's just truly a special player and a special person. And then with your team, I think it's interesting that you, you've sort of, you know, in this day and age of the transfer portal, you have quite a few really talented players from the Division II rank. And, and then what, what they've meant to, to your program, and then also sort of that side of the transfer that maybe a lot of people don't see. Yeah, you know, that's been something that's been successful. We've had um, several guys from the Division II level. We have one from the Division III level, like, you know, a couple of Division II All-Americans this year. Joel Scott was a Division II National Player of the Year. Um, 
and he's played at a high level in our league, you know, at the highest levels of, of college basketball. Um, I think for us, you know, we've had to get, you know, creative in how we recruit and we look for the right kinds of fits for our program. And, you know, I believe sometimes people, um, um, you know, you can confuse potential with production. Uh, um, and these are highly productive guys who played on high level winning programs at the division two level for great coaches and they're able to do it when they're at the top of the scouting report. Um, and oftentimes you find that that, pro that production translates to our level and so it has. And the other thing that's really neat about those guys, I mean all our guys are, but those guys probably when they started their career at a lower level, they never anticipated or dreamt about playing in a tournament like this at the highest level and they're just they're so appreciative of, of everything they have, and that's so refreshing as a coach. And then I guess on the other end of it, you, you also have uh, another transfer, Nick Clifford, who is a, a really talented player, has always been looked at in that light, and then what he was able to do with Colorado and then coming over now to, to Colorado State, what, what he's been able to bring to the Rams. Yeah, I mean, he is, uh, you know, he's a young man. We, uh, we recruited heavily out of high school and uh, um, de decided to join our, uh, our evil uh, brother down the, uh, <laughs> down the road. I love you, Tad Boyle. Uh, um, but, you know, for him, it was just an opportunity where, you know, wanted a change, um, and he's come over here and has just fit in seamlessly from day one. He's an elite human being. He's a talented player, um, has been able to fill a role that we desperately needed, and he's just really had a, a great season for us. And um, he was an all-conference level player, and it's been fun to watch. We wouldn't be where we are uh, um, without him. I asked this to the, the players that joined us earlier their favorite March Madness moment, uh, your favorite moment? Man, um, I'll remember it like it was yesterday, sitting in my parents' living room. We were going to have dinner, and I'm watching Duke, Kentucky, and watch Christian Leitner make that shot, uh, like live on TV, like uh, on Sunday, and I'll never forget that uh, moment watching it with my family and, and, and whatever, because I can still, you know, have that snapshot in time, and um, I'm that old, right? I can remember that or whatever, watching it. Sorry to those guys, right, who are playing or whatever, but, um, but I, I remember it like it was yesterday. And then from that, you, you've been able to experience this stage as a coach. Your favorite moment coaching in March Madness? You know, a, a, as an assistant coach, I think one of the coolest moments was my last year an assistant at CSU was having those guys that had gone through an incredible journey together. We got into the tournament and we beat Missouri um, and getting that win for that group of seniors in the NCAA tournament was incredibly special. And, you know, two years ago, that group of guys uh, that went to the tournament too, the year before we went through COVID, Thought we had, I thought we were going to make it. We had an, you know, really unfortunate circumstances down the stretch of the regular season. We're one of the first teams left out. And two years ago, we got an opportunity to go and be a six seed. And you know, even though it didn't work out, just that those guys getting on that journey and having an opportunity just to get into the to this tournament was pretty cool. And now focusing on on this moment, uh, what's if you've been able to. What's your biggest concern in, in looking at Virginia and trying to prepare for the Cavaliers? <laughs> um, I just, you know, um, again, I have as much respect for, for Tony and what he's done um, with his program and the way he does it. I think he's one of, if not the best coach in the country, um, gets more out of teams than, than anyone maybe who's ever done it. Um, they are – Again, they're never going to beat themselves. You have to beat them. They're going to play the style of game they want to play no matter who they're playing, and it's been like that throughout the course of his career. Um, it's difficult to get anything in transition. Um, it's difficult to get quality shots. Uh, um, they're going to force you to guard and screen you, and they really, you know, it's like being in quicksand sometimes playing against them. And so if you're going to go out and have an opportunity to beat Virginia, you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to win possessions and um, um, find a way to steal it at the end. And so um, that's what concerns me because you know the level of consistency and the culture that they have in their program. Any other questions for Coach? Coach, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to watching your team tomorrow night.
Thank you.
for those individuals in the press room, uh, we do ask that you silence your cell phones as we continue. We'll be welcoming on the Virginia Cavaliers here in uh, just a matter of seconds. Uh, when asking a question, uh, please remember to provide your name and media affiliation uh, for each question that you ask. And then those uh, individuals joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, for those questions, just use the hand feature and uh, we'll definitely get to you. And then recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. We appreciate. And now at, at this time, we'd like to welcome to the stage the Virginia Cavaliers, 23-10, and 13-7 uh, and 7 out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, they finished uh, third in the ACC. In the middle, we have Isaac McNeely. And to his left, Reese Beekman, second team, all-conference, defensive player of the year in the ACC, and then Ryan Dunn on the end, uh, also all defense. Before we get to questions for our student athletes, uh, uh, Reese, uh, and I'll ask all three of you, but we'll start with Reese, uh, your excitement of, of being here in Dayton and back in the NCAA tournament. Um, Yeah, great excitement. You know, this, this one was a little nerve-wracking, you know, with the selection show. Um, not knowing our faith fully. So um, just to be able to get in and have this um, another moment, you know, coming off last year, it means a lot to me. Isaac, your, your thoughts and feelings? Yeah, like he said, going into the selection show, you know, this year was a little different. We were on the bubble. We weren't sure if we were going to be here. So watching the selection show, like he said, it was a little nerve-wracking. But just to see our name come up, it was a blessing. And I know we're all excited to be here. I know we're all excited to hopefully make a run. And we're going to do our best to do that. So, yeah. And then Ryan. Um, these two kind of touched on it a lot. Um, we were kind of nerve wracking a little bit going to the show. Um, seeing our names was very exciting for us, and we're just we're grateful to be here and get this opportunity again. Without any questions in the audience, let's jump online. And uh, Mike, uh, your question for the student athletes via Zoom. Uh, hey guys, uh, congratulations on the bid. I'm curious if you could just tell me what you've seen from Colorado State, uh, your sense of what they do well, and, and what'll be important tomorrow night. We'll start with uh, Reese. Um, yeah, we watched a little bit of their film so far. Um, I know they have a you know more experienced and older team. Um, you know, great guard, guard play from them, and just a lot of moving actions with them. So, you know, we gotta you know use these um, prep days to you know kind of scout good for them and kind of um, have our best chance. Isaac and uh, preparation for the Rams. Yeah, no. Um, like Reese said, they got really good guard play. Old, uh, experienced team. Um, you know, they're in a really good conference. The Mount West has been a really good conference this year. So, you know, it's not a light test at all. You know, it'll test, you know, our vision, our defense, because they got a really high-powered offense. So, you know, I'm excited for the challenge. And they're a really good team. So we'll, we'll see how we stack up against them tomorrow. And Ryan? Yeah, same thing. Um, we watched film. We've seen how good they are um, with their guards, um, with their actions and their cutting and their, their DHOs and stuff. So, we got to be on high alert for that, but um, we're just excited to go play against them. I know they're a really good team, so we should come out and be ready. Also important to note uh, for those individuals in attendance, but also for the folks joining us online, when you ask your question, if you could provide your name and your affiliation, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, question in the back of the room. Uh, Justin Harris, University of Dayton. So you guys are rated as one of the best defenses in the country. What got you guys to buy into that like defense-first mindset? Ryan? Um, I'll say Coach TB was probably the biggest thing. Um, he drilled it into us in the summer a lot, you know, just 
doubling down on defense, um, being in the gaps, playing our playing our roles defensively, and just having that the defensive mentality is big for us. Can help us win games. Um, when shots aren't falling for us, we can rely on our defense to get stops. So that's kind of the big reason why we kind of just double down on our defense and rely on it a lot. Isaac, thoughts on defense? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the first thing is if you don't play defense, you're not going to play here. So I mean, we kind of have to, to have to do it. But uh, like Ryan said, you know, when our offense. You know, sometimes we're not hitting shots. Our defense can keep us in the game. So, you know, we that's like our calling card is our defense. And it's going to take a good defensive effort tomorrow against this Colorado State team. But, you know, we, we drill defensive a lot. Uh, you know, coaches are honest about it. So I think that's why we have such a good defense. Two-time defensive player of the year, Reese. Yeah, um, I've been here for – this is my last year here, fourth year. And um, Coach Bennett has preached defense since day one. Um, Offensives change different schemes with that, but our defense, you know, intensity has always been there from day one. I think that um, that energy he brings to like our practice, it, it feeds on us. Um, I think everybody gets, you know, locked in and dialed in um, defensively. It's just, you know, when you do that, it's, it makes defense more fun. You know, I know everybody wants to play defense, but when you play like us, I feel like it's um, energizing. Second row on the end. Uh, Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. It was an interesting season, apparently, for Virginia. You had some really good wins, some good stretches, and then there were some really tough days looking at the scores. What was the difference from day to day, from game to game with you guys? Breeze? Um, I don't know. It was just, you know, some nights were not our nights, and I feel like we just kind of, you know, let the game get away from us. We never really, you know, had a fight back in those games. We kind of just let it go, but – I feel like down the stretch, we kind of, you know, try to battle and get away from those. I know the ACC tournament games were all close, um, you know, possession games. I feel like we battled throughout those whole games. It was definitely moments we could have lost it and, you know, kind of just, you know, lost our composure. But I feel like we've grown in that, that area, and that's going to um, help us in the tournament. Isaac, your feelings on the up and downs of the season? Yeah, I feel like – a lot of those were in, you know, the early season. You know, we took a lot of tough losses early in the season that we probably shouldn't have. And I feel like a lot of those were because we weren't playing a full 40 minutes. You know, we'd come out strong in the first half and then we let it get away from us in the second half and it just kept the lead kept going. But I think we've kind of matured as the season went on and, you know, we've cut down on those. We've, you know, our offense is a lot better now. Our defense is a lot better now. So, you know, I think we're starting to play a full 40 minutes, you know, down the stretch at the end of the season. So I think that's the biggest difference. Hey, Brian? Yeah, um, I think early in the season was kind of our biggest struggle because of our inexperience. Um, we get to know each other, know our strengths and our weaknesses. Um, and I think kind of what Max said, sometimes we'll come out and play strong for another 20 minutes and then somehow it will slip or we'll come out, we we'll, won't come out our, our best and we'll get punched in the mouth early. But I think once the midway through the season point, we kind of got together and we just kept we kept pushing and kept going forward. I think that was kind of our string of wins that we that we needed. Um, and then at the end, you know, we had a, we had a little slack, but I think we tied tied up a little bit. So um, I think just for us, just keep that 40, keep that forty minute mentality. Just keep playing forty minutes as much as we can. Fourth row in the middle. Hey guys, Brady Hopkins with the University of Dayton. So as great as a coach as Tony Bennett is, him being at Virginia for for so many years, what is it? Uh, what has he done that stood out to you guys as that made you guys want to play for a great coach like him? I'll start with Ryan. That's a good question. Um, I think on my visit was probably the biggest thing that I've seen. I think off the court wise, he's just a great person to be around. He's he's honest. He's gonna tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. That's what I was looking for in a coach, someone to tell me when I'm doing well, with someone to critique me when I need when I need help. Um, so that was kind of one of the big reasons. And then um, in practice, he brings the same intensity, probably more to practice than the games, which is which is kind of crazy to me. But um, he's just a great coach to be around. Um, he tries to bring out the best in you whenever whenever we need it. Um, he tries to encourage you. We also let you know when you need, what you need to know. So that's why I like, like him as a coach. Isaac? Yeah, like he said, you know, he tells you uh, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You know, a lot of coaches in the recruiting process will tell you, you know, you're going to come in and be the man and stuff like that. But I feel like TB didn't promise us anything, you know, and me anyway. He told me, you know, if you're good enough, you're going to play, but I can't promise you anything. And I really respected that about him. So uh, just his honesty and how genuine he was, was, you know, the thing that brought me to him. And then, like Ryan said, his passion for the game, how he pushes in practice is a big deal. And, you know, that's that's what I want to play for, someone like that for sure. And Reese? Yeah, I will say just his genuine personality um, outside of the court. Um, you know, I kind of want to coach with, you know, have a relation on and off the court, you know, because basketball isn't just the whole thing while you're in school. So. Um, we kind of built that relationship, and, you know, I could tell he's 
got that with a lot of the guys. So it's just good to have that, just that balance. Mike, do you have another question for our student athletes on Zoom? I do. I do. Um, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Hey, Reese, uh, you obviously decided to come back for your senior year, and, and this was a big part of, of your goals for this year. What does it mean to you to to be here, and and what would it mean to uh, win some games in this tournament? Yeah, it mean it mean a lot. Like you said, this was the reason I came back. Um, been here two times, been knocked out the first round both times. So just to have the opportunity, you know, just to lead this team and, you know, see how far we can go. I feel like we got a good chance. Um, you know, I feel like we're playing some of our best basketball right now. And, you know, I'm just excited to see how far we can go. Mike, a, a follow-up question? Or yes, do, please. Do you have yes, another please. one? Uh, and for Isaac and, and Ryan, I, I'm curious, just this process with the first four, um, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that you found out you were in and who you were playing and you're already there in Dayton. What, what has this kind of whirlwind been like of, of getting there and getting ready? Isaac? Yeah, I mean, it's a quick turnaround. And, you know, we went from watching the show on Sunday, uncertain if we'd even be in the field, to seeing our name come up. And then we ended up practicing that night because, you know, we like to get two practices in before a game. Like I said, it's a quick turnaround. So, and then we were off to Dayton, and here we are. So, you know, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful that they gave us a chance. So, I know we're excited to get after it tomorrow. And then Ryan. Yeah, like Isaac said, um, it was kind of a crazy couple of 48 hours for us. Um, we were sitting on our couches just trying to see if we're playing, and then next thing you know, we're here um, in front of you guys. But I'm, we're we're all grateful to be here. Um, it's just we're playing basketball. It's what we do. It's what we love to do. So. Um, I'm grateful to be in this position to just be playing March Madness again. Other questions for our student athletes? Let's go to uh, the second row on the end. Uh, I'll, for Reese, I guess to start with Excuse what me, name uh, and affiliation? Okay, uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. What was the level of confidence among the team going into the selection show? Because there were a lot of emotions in the video that got posted and. MC and other guys kind of going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't, it was a lot of uncertainty coming in. You know, I I was seeing online a little bit. Most of the brackets had us out, um, like the first four out, just like right on that cut line. So coming in, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I know those brackets are always like the final and, you know, stuff changes. But, you know, the emotions were high, you know, all day. I was just kind of nervous, trying to um, not think about it too much, but, you know, that was really what was on my mind most of the day. So, you know, getting our name called was a, you know, great experience. Um, probably one of the best experience at UVA so far. So, um, yeah, it was just a great honor to be here, and I hope we make the most of it. Isaac, uh, do you have a favorite March Madness moment? Um, well, I've only been in one March Madness, and it didn't well, go too well, well. So, well, even as a fan, I mean, growing up. As oh, a kid. okay. Um. Probably I'm going to go with my teammate Jake Groves whenever Easton Washington, him and his brother, both had like 30 against Kansas. I enjoy watching that. Shout out Jake Groves. <laughs> Same question to Ryan. Favorite moment? Um, I think for me, um, so I was kind of a UNC fan growing up. Um, don't tell nobody. Um, so <laughs> I would say when uh, Marcus Page, even though kids didn't hit that shot, I think Marcus Page hitting that shot to tie the game up for them. Um, was kind of a big deal for me. I was young. I was cheering up and down. Um, and then he, Chris Jenkins had that shot, and I kind of cried a little bit. But um, that was probably one of my favorite memories. And then when they won the next year, um, it was it was a good memory for me. That was probably my favorite year, my favorite one, too. And Reese? Um, I would probably say the, the UVA run. That was um, right be I was getting recruited a little bit by them at that time. And um, – just to see them, you know, with all Ty, Ty, um, Kyle, and Dre and all them, um, you know, that was a special run and kind of just put in like perspective that I could be there at one point, and that was just a you know a special run for them after coming off the the, um, the loss they had the year before. Second row. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Isaac, <clears throat> with, with how the the ACC tournament ended for you guys with the NC State game. Just what are your thoughts about, man, we get another chance to go play and we get to be in this tournament when you knew you were on the edge of it? Yeah, you know, I thought we had chances to put that game away, um, especially when I stepped to the line. But, you know, it's good to have another chance uh, to play. 
because you know I would have hung my head on that forever if we would we wouldn't have got in. But uh, so just having the chance to play, you know, with the selection show, the uncertainty if we were going to be in or not, seeing our name, getting this chance, you know, I think we're just going to make the most of the opportunity. And I know we're all th really thankful to be here for sure. So, Jeff, another question? Yeah, just you guys on kind of the same thing of like. Uh, we almost didn't get to do this. How, how is it? Is there a gratefulness? Well, how do you feel about that? Reese? Yeah, I'll definitely say relief. Um, you know, after, you know, that loss has been with us. That was like two days after, or yeah, two days after, still was on, still on my mind. And then going to the selection show, you know, like if that was like my last ACC game, that was just a tough way to go out. So it was just relief getting in to the tournament, you know, kind of that pressure that last game kind of, goes away knowing we have another opportunity to um, have a better outcome. Ryan. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. Um, that loss kind of hurt us a lot. Um, we were kind of just figuring out what was, we were on the edge of the lot and we didn't know what was going to happen for us. Um, we kind of needed that win and it was a, it was kind of a, a crazy loss for us to have. Um, but, you know, having, being back here um, with this opportunity, we're just, again, grateful and we don't know what can happen. Anything can happen for us, uh, for anybody. Um, like we heard that there were a lot of, kind of what we said, a lot of brackets there were like 63 brackets out and only one of us had this in. And we were kind of like on the doubt of like, okay, well, we're probably, probably not, probably might, we don't, we don't know. So hearing our name called and being back on this stage and being back in this, in this, in this arena and this platform, it's just, it's just great to be back here. Let's go to the second row on the other side of the aisle. Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com, Isaac. This might be fall more on the coaches than the players, but what is the challenge of getting ready for a game of this magnitude in such a quick time against a team that you're not familiar with? Yeah, you know, like I said, after we found out we got in the tournament, we practiced that night. Um, two pretty intense practices because, like I said, they're a good offensive team, and, you know, we pride ourselves on our defense. So, you know, we've been going over their actions and stuff, just, you know, practicing, guarding it, you know, really intense practices. So, and like you said, we don't know a whole lot about Colorado State, so we've been watching a lot of film, you know, getting a lot of info on them, just trying to do whatever we can. And, you know, the coaches put us in the best position to, to win. So, you know, I think where we're at right now, we're in a good spot. Um, you know, they're a really good team, so we're going to have to come out and play. But, you know, I'm excited, and I think, I think we have a good chance. Mike, another question online via Zoom. Yeah, guys, uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Time Dispatch. If you guys could just share, uh, Jordan Miner, obviously coming to Virginia, getting to the tournament was a big part of his goal. What's your experience been with Jordan, and uh, how happy are you guys for him that he gets that opportunity? Isaac? Yeah, Jordan, you know, really good player, of course. You know, early in the season, he probably didn't get the minutes he wanted to, but he's just, you know, he's put his head down, he's kept working, and, you know, ever since he stepped in the lineup, he's – really helped us a lot you know he's came in, in big games there's a lot of really good you know centers in the ACC and he's he's held up with him pretty well so you know I respect Jordan he's my roommate on the road so I've gotten really close with him this season so I'm really glad he's a part of this journey with us and you know Jordan's one heck of a guy so I'm happy for him. Ryan your thoughts on Jordan? Yeah um, Jordan's put his head down at work all year and um, I'm very grateful to have him here and he's put the work in he's shown that he's one of the best bigs in the ACC but um, not only Jordan, but also Jake and Reese, um, having our seniors come back um, and being able to be here is big for all three of them, you know. Um, Jake wanted, came here to be back in the March Madness, which was good for him, and then Reese came back for his last year to be here. So um, I'm, I'm just happy for all three of them to be back here. I'm, I'm happy for us just to help them um, be in this position that they're in. So, yeah. Reese. Yeah, I just got a lot of respect for him. You know, he came to this program. This isn't, you know, one of the easiest programs to, like, you know, it takes time to fit into the system and fully understand it. So, you know, his timing, you know, it took him a while to get, get um, under control. But when he came in, he made a, you know, an instant impact. And, you know, I was very grateful for that. So, you know, I'm just very proud of him. He never, um, you know, gave up. You know, he easily could have just shut down when he wasn't getting the time he, he um, probably wanted. But when he came in and stepped up, um, he did a lot for us. And he's shown that um, his growth over the season is, is a major help for us. Any other questions for our student athletes? G gentlemen, congratulations getting here. Uh, we're really excited to watch you tomorrow night against Colorado State. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
At this time, we welcome to the stage uh, head coach of the v Virginia Cavaliers, uh, Tony Bennett. Coach, before questions, just your thoughts uh, on the season and uh, being back here in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, um, you know, really, a, I think an up and down season, um, probably one of the more inexperienced teams that that I've coached. Um, this is my 15th year at Virginia. And, you know, with just the way college basketball is, we didn't have a lot of experience returning. And I probably shouldn't be talking about that, knowing who we're playing, because they're one of the most experienced teams. But uh, we had Reese Beekman. And I think you're going to see two of the best point guards go head to head tomorrow. Um, I think Isaiah is special from what I'm seeing. And I know what Reese is, and he is too. But, um, but Reese was our guy who came back. And the two guys that were just up on the podium before me, you know, Ryan played about 10 minutes a game, and, and Isaac McNeely played about 20 minutes. And the rest, no one played, so it was all new. So I didn't know what to expect. We had a few games um, early where we got blown out, and we had some late. But we always kind of bounced back, and their spirit was good, and we kept fighting and found a way to finish third in the ACC um, and fought. And I think we improved as the season went on. So to, to be able to position ourselves, and then after a heartbreaking loss against NC State where I thought we played quality basketball, we didn't know if that was going to be you know, at times, the way this is this year, you think, I think that's enough. I think we're in. And then, and then well, everybody's on the bubble. But uh, we certainly sweated it out. But so grateful for the opportunity. And, and I heard the last questions uh, for, for Reese, for Jake, and for Jordan, those guys. I, I've been fortunate to experience uh, so many good things. And I'm grateful for that. But to see it for the young men who I know what they're about. And uh, that was a powerful moment when our name came up. It was real emotional, and it was uh, exciting to celebrate with them because, you know, a lot of the, you know, brackets. I don't look into that, but one of my, our SID said, or actually, it was someone else said, well, you're not on many of those brackets, uh, so I don't know what your chances are, but I'm just thankful to be here. Second row on the end. <clears throat> Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Tony. You have experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows in this event. How does all that experience, has that developed the way you look at this thing, how you approach it, and is it a value at this time when you're trying to get a team ready and you can share whatever with them? Yeah, no, I certainly have. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just one of those deals where you prepare as well as you can. Um, you know, and I think even more this year, last year, the – the quality of teams because of, you know, the, the transfer rule and, you know, even at the extra year, you can kind of fix your team quick. I think the quality of the game is as good as it's been. Um, and so you prepare your team well. Uh, you know that you're going to have to execute. You're going to have to do things. You know, the conference tournament kind of prepares you for that. Um, but uh, you're thankful for the opportunity to excite it. But you rely on your experiences. And I just said kind of in my opening statement, we don't have, we only had one player that had played at Duke when we went there, and um, only a couple of our guys had played in an ACC tournament. So you never know. Sometimes that um, it, inexperience can be positive. You step into it, but, uh, but you embrace the challenge. And you just possession by possession play it out and know that nothing's guaranteed in this tournament. I mean, so much as we've talked about it, being healthy, matchups, how you're playing, and obviously the opponent. So yeah, like I said, uh, um, I have experienced uh, both highs, <laughs> and I mean both sides of it, you know, and um, I mean, it's, uh, it keeps you humble for sure. Second row in the middle. Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Tony, with so little time to prepare for this game, what do you prioritize yeah. in these practices? <clears throat> well, I think, you know, it, it's it, you have to be true to who you are. And, um, you know, when we saw our name come up and it was Colorado State, and um, obviously knowing the job Nico has done, I know Nico um, personally, and I think he's one of the better coaches. I don't know his age exactly. I was going to say better young coaches out there. I, uh, um, but he um, – and he's done great in the way his team plays. So you know you're going to have to be uh, as good as you can defensively to make them earn. You look at their point guard. You look at their experience. But you pick – Three or four things and say, fellas, this is who we are. Let's be as good as we can. And hopefully it's our best against their stuff. And um, again, you know, you're going to have to play a complete game. We understand that. As I said, the tournament, that's why I think it was so hard probably for the selection committee. The tournament has improved with the teams and the age and the, you know, transfers and all that have added so much to the 
the quality of the game from start to finish. So many upsets in conference tournaments, and I think that's a reflection of that. So um, you can't overcomplicate it. <laughs> you don't have time to. You just got to be as ready as you can. And, and, um, and when that ball's tipped, try to enjoy it, but get after it. Go to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Brady Hopkins with the University of Dayton. So you played for your father um, in college and for four years, and as he was your head coach. And so were, were you able to see anything from him as a head coach that you maybe could have applied to yourself as a head coach since you've been a head coach for 18 years now? Yeah, I played at the, the Nutter Center uh, at Wright State. <laughs> I was at Wisconsin Green Bay and played for him, played against Vitaly Potapenko. So I don't know if people <laughs> remember him. And uh, we were just talking about um, – Fuck, what were we just talking about before? Yeah, that's right, Bill Edwards, great players. Um, it's a great league and it's changed. But playing for my father was uh, one of the most enjoyable things and sometimes one of the most excruciating things all in one. You need to talk about the agony and, <laughs> and the ecstasy of it. But he taught me so much. Um, he, he, uh, I learned from him, and I've said this often before, probably the greatest lesson I learned, that was a very fierce competitor and he demanded execution, but, and he, um, he would push you hard, but whenever he stepped across the line, he would apologize the next day, or he'd say, forgive me, I lost my temper. And, um, and I remember that always struck me, and because and he'd push you hard. Um, and I think that was a great lesson to learn, like, because as coaches, you don't have all the answers. Uh, we make mistakes, we screw up, and sometimes it, the heat of battle, things happen. But if you can um, tell the young men, sorry, forgive me. Um, we need you. That's what I learned from him, among a bunch of other stuff, basketball-wise, and uh, you know how to. I've never seen a coach really. I, there's only a couple, and of course I'm biased, but that could get more out of a team. They could find a way to just get teams to be competitive. I, I still marvel at that. But uh, that first thing I said is stuff that's lasting. You know, I think that's the good stuff. But thankful to play for him, and I coached with him. Um, probably coaching with them was a little easier than playing for them, but, uh, but it was all good. <laughs> Let's go to the second row on the end. As a coach, is there sometimes a helpless feeling when the free throws aren't dropping? And when, when a team is struggling from the line, do you talk about it, not talk about it, just go out and shoot more or, or what? Yeah, um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of opportunities this year. Um, and been in those spots, and we've won almost all of our close games. Um, but, and we've tried a lot of different things. You know, you do the build drill where you put a guy at the free throw line, and the team's underneath, and if they miss, you got a down and back or different things. And we've got competitions. But at this stage, I think probably less is more. You don't have time. We just, you get your reps, you shoot them. And, um, you know, in these tight games, free throws really matter. So I always have confidence in our guys, but um, that has been a struggle most of the year. And, um, you know, I'm always, like I said, I'm hopeful, but. Uh, probably less is more at this stage. Um, you encourage them, say, hey, get the next one if you miss one, and um, try to get the right people at the line. But uh, it's, um, you know, we've, I think we were last in the league in free throw shooting, and uh, it wasn't for a lack of, no one's trying to miss free throws. There has to be a rhythm and a confidence, and um, you got to get there, and um, no one's trying to miss them. So you just kind of get on to the next thing. Stay in the second row, Jeff. Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Kind of segues into my question about Isaac having missed the, in, the NC State, the end of the game, the ups and downs of everything. How happy are you for, I know you're happy for your team to get this chance after that loss, but how much also for Isaac feeling like I'm the guy that maybe let us down? No, he didn't. He played terrific. Um, and Reese played terrific. And so for those guys to get in and, and look, I, I, I believe I made a mistake at the end of the game. I, that we had two fouls. We had decided to, um, to not foul. We fouled a three-point shooter um, before. And then we had talked as a team and said, let's, let's win it with our defense. And we, we got a stop with five seconds left. Didn't foul. We were up three. Got the rebound. And Isaac went to the line. And um, you know, I was going to call a timeout, but I didn't want to ice him, but should have had you know, if I could do that over, should have had the guys at the line and thinking about it now, maybe fouled on that spot because we had some to give. So, look, all that stuff happens. There's things in game. Basketball is a game of mistakes, right? And it's the team that can knock down those mistakes. And we always talk about knocking down bad habits defensively or offensively. Not being perfect, there's going to be mistakes made, but you knock them down. But the way he played in that game, the way Reese, um, we wouldn't have even been in that game, in that spot. Um, 
if those guys hadn't produced the way they did. And those are the guys we wanted at the line for sure. And we just, I think we missed, I don't know, um, you know, made one out of five in the last 60 or 70 seconds, which we could have salted away. But, um, but they played well to get to that spot. And Quite I'm very grateful that they got, they got this opportunity. That's why I think it was so emotional in the, the, um, the selection show when we were there, because it's just you could feel that, and, and um, there was a lot there. A question uh, via Zoom. Uh, Matt, mm. uh, your question for Coach. Yeah, Coach, uh, Matt Majinski with College Basketball Review. Um, you know, obviously a lot of debate like every year as far as which teams on the bubble are going to make it, which teams won't. As a last four team in, is there maybe a sense of, okay, we want to prove that we deserve to be in here? Of course, well, you just you want to play well. You're, you're first always – you always start by being thankful, and, and we always are so thankful and grateful for the opportunity. Uh, but then you just want to play well. I mean, if you're trying to prove – to everyone who says you're not good or you don't belong, that's a that's a tiresome battle. You got to look at your group and say let's let's play to our fullest abilities. Let's go after this and uh, and get after it. So, but who doesn't want to come into this NCAA tournament in advance? Um, and so that part is there. But I think the the excitement of getting in and then again knowing you're going to have to play well and you're going to have to execute on both ends to advance um, is where the focus is. And you think of it that way, that's at least our approach. Let's go to the fourth row. Uh, Coach, uh, hi. Patrick Sableski, University of Dayton. Uh, so you talked about being on the bubble this year, which is a different position than your program usually in. <clears throat> Can you talk a little bit about how the approach this year has been different as a bubble team than in years past when you're more of a lock? Yeah, I think you know the last number of games, um, handful of games, six or seven games, um, you know, every game was meaningful. And we knew that. And that that is, you know, if you just sit there and fixate on that, that's tough. But you, you know you're playing in meaningful games, and so you just lock into the execution. You lock into, like, what you can do. We just kept talking about, you know, whether it was four minutes at a time or, or giving our best but, but holding it a little bit loosely. And I thought then the guys started playing. And, you know, you had a couple big wins, and then we went to Duke and had a really – got crushed there and had to get back up again and, you know, go to BC. There's different games, play in the conference tournament. So that that situation and, and all those teams that are on the bubble understand that, that's a little different experience than, okay, we can drop one or go into the conference tournament, we're going to be a – maybe our seed drop. So I think it's it's a, it's important, and I always told our guys, it's good to be playing meaningful games at this time of the year. The alternative, if it's not meaningful unless you're there, um, is uh, – is not as good. So with our team and being, you know, I don't, I don't want to say this was a, a rebuilding year, but it was just a different year for us with the, the inexperience and Reese being the only guy that, you know, has played a significant amount and then Isaac and Ryan. But, um, but it was a year that we didn't know quite what to expect. So we just kept head down. We kept talking about it and here all the time, put the blinders on and, you know, the Kentucky Derby, the horses, they get in and just, Blinders on, head down, and run the race in front of you, and don't look left or right. And that's kind of been the approach for us always, but especially um, being a team that was on the bubble. Let's go second row in the middle. Coach Mark McFarland, uh, Dayton Daily News. Uh, welcome to Dayton. And uh, I just wonder, there's been, with the different experiences you've had playing at a smaller school, the different places you've coached, there's been things floating around about potential changes to the tournament, whether it's auto bids, expansion, whatever have you. I just wonder what are your, maybe if you have any thoughts on any of those types of things. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously I played at Green Bay. We talked about that. Um, coached at Wisconsin with my father and, and Coach Ryan um, and uh, was an assistant with Coach Gardo. They're doing a great job at Wisconsin. was at Washington State where we were trying to build the program and, you know, got left out. Um, when, if the numbers, if the selection committee was the way it is now at Green Bay my senior year, lock, we were in. And I'll never forget we had a, um, <laughs> was at a sports bar, there were a couple hundred people there, the newspaper we sat, celebrated, we thought, you know, we sat there and watched the brackets come out, and then boom, when we weren't in, you know, I know that feeling. So um, as far as the tournament, the number it's at now, I, I think it's a good number. I don't think it should go a lot bigger, but if there's room to expand it and it makes sense timing wise and, um, you know, maybe some of these teams that are on the bubble, I guess wherever line you move it to, there's going to be the other, <laughs> there's always going to be a bubble, right? And we'll find that out with the, this college football playoffs. But um, I just, you know, I, I think 
there's something special about the size it's at. Maybe there's a little room for more, and I'm glad they expanded it to the uh, this site <laughs> over the years. How long has it been since they've done that? Ten years. Ten years. So it's a good decision, great decision. So, um, but um, but I, you know, if it makes sense, certainly you do it. But you don't want to hurt the the integrity of this thing and the quality of it. Second row on the end. Maybe no one <clears throat> understands what Matt Painter's last 12 months have been like better than you do. Not that you've had a lot of free time, but have you kind of, out of curiosity, just kind of kept an eye on them, see how they came back from that, how they're doing it, how they're going to do it this month as far as just how they, they, they handled the whole thing? Well, first of all, you talk about an unbelievable coach. Um, and, and man, um, he's, he's special that way. Uh, I know Matt. Um, I wouldn't say we're close friends, but but respect him so much. And you know the way we got to the Final Four in Purdue in the Elite Eight was one of those endings that was you know um, goes down in the the record books. I think for how we won that game. And I, as excited as I was, I, I felt for him at that time. But then um, you know seeing that happen, I I didn't want to see that. I remember a couple of my coaches said they they texted me and said I think we're going to have company. And I, I wasn't watching that game at the time. It wasn't. I was like, and I turned the game on, and I felt some of those feelings. And I was like, no. Yeah, I, was, I was hoping it wouldn't happen, um, but it did. And look, there's been a lot of that. The parity of the league's good. And I did send Matt a text, and we had talked, you know, a time or two, and saw him. But um, he's strong. And, and again, you know, how you deal with that um, will determine what happens. He's, they've had a great year. That doesn't guarantee anything. Um, they have a good enough team, certainly, to win it all. You can see that. But um, yeah, I'm sure there's some things that he's had to deal with that no one else has. We have in our own ways. And uh, it is humbling, but it produces some things that um, wouldn't be produced without that experience because it becomes more about you and your young men, you and your family, and those that you entrust yourself to. And it. Uh, it tightens the circle and it makes it pretty strong. And I, I would imagine that that is a, a rock solid group. And uh, I wish Matt and that group nothing but the best. Mike, your, your question for Coach uh, via Zoom. Uh, hey, Tony, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Congratulations on the selection. Thanks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious what you see from Nico's offense that makes it so challenging. A lot. Um, I had to do uh, the Westwood radio and Coach Beheim was, he's going to be the radio guy. And I said, Jesus, this is one of those years where maybe I wish I had Coach Beheim's zone. <laughs> you didn't have to handle all those cuts. I mean, they move, they cut. And I, as I said, Isaiah is their point guard. Um, he's one of the best passers I've seen. You know, him and Reese, those are two such special point guards. But his uh, composure, the way they use him, whether it's ball screens or dribble handoffs or little actions, and then they're cutting the other guys. And their physicality, Mike, you know, just the spacing, they're cutting, they score in different ways. It's impressive. And I, again, um, you know, I've known Nico and, and my father and him are actually very close and always have, you know, um, certainly been impressed with what he's done. And, and, you know, watching it now in the last two days closely, you, you can see why they've been so successful over the years in a very good league. And I think it just puts a premium on your ability to, you know, first get back and, and you can only you can't stop everything, but you have to make them earn. And you better be continuous and have great vision. But you got to be able to guard uh, your guy and and then get him off the glass. All those kinds of things. Just for confirmation, thirteen, thirteen for the first four here years. No, oh, thirteen years. 13. I was going to say thirteen. Coach, <laughs> no, we're at ten. Uh, seed. No, we're at thirteen <laughs> seed. Okay. <laughs> Coach, we greatly appreciate your time, and uh, we are really looking forward to seeing your group tomorrow night. Best of luck against Thank Colorado you. State. Appreciate it.